What's up, everybody? This is Johnny Basement, and we're back here in the basement for a major matchup with the Rangers and Devils, which is already in progress. Got a late start today. Not much I can do about that, but we are in here. We got a, <laughs> and we missed, I saw the highlights, but missed a hell of a start to this game. A lot of fights right off the bat. Payback for Rempe from him going after. Their players, cheap shot and guys, and I am a Ranger fan. They are definitely, there were a couple of definite, definite, definite cheap shots. But here we are. The uh, That's just the way it goes right now. I just, when I turned it on, it must have been me. When I turned it on, it must have been me. The, uh, the Rangers, I'm still getting set up while I'm talking to you guys. The Rangers were up two to one. I turned the TV on. We give up two goals right away. Two goals. Right away, I mean, back to back, pretty much. I don't know what the heck's going on. But it's not cool, man. So this has been a problem. We knew this was coming. Rempe, uh, Rempe kind of avoided the fights the last time. So uh, McDermott got a little pissed off at that, a little like, you know, I mean, Rempe's, listen, it's been a while since we've seen a fighter come out like this, a rough player come out like this in a long time. All right? He came out like this. Pissed some people off. The last time they and the Devils played, Rempe did, I'm telling you, it was a cheap shot. The guy no longer had the puck. He came skating up full force, hit him, hit him with his elbow right in the side of his face. McDermott wanted to fight him. Rempe kept avoiding the fight, and then Rempe got ejected for that hit, and he went like this to McDermott. Like, dude, that – so you know at the start, if you guys missed it, watch the highlights. Drop of the puck. Five fights right off the bat. There was only four refs, five fights. They couldn't control them all. So a lot of things going on. Uh, it's three to two Devils right now. Again, that's my fault. I turned the TV on. It was two to one Rangers when I turned it on. And then goal, goal, three to two Devils. So that's my fault. Laviolette, our coach, will tell the team that that uh, Johnny Baseman turned the TV on and we went down two goals right away. So it was my fault. Anyway, who do we got here? Flex, first cellar dweller and Ozzy in the basement. Flex is here. What's going on, Flex? Gunner, OG cellar dweller accounted for. Gunner's in the basement. Brew, another OG cellar dweller accounted for. Gunner, is, uh, Gunner, Bruins in the basement. Guys, I'm catching up here, catching up. And Flex, our Ozzy, and helpful, super, super helpful with the channel. That's why he's the moderator on here. Uh, much appreciated to him when I lost my... Discord the last time he helped me get the new one up. He didn't even help me. He did it. He did it. He's been great with the technical stuff. That's why you see the wrench next to his name. He is the official basement moderator. Thank you, Flex, for all of your help. The guy has been tremendous for me. Um, so anyway, 644 left in the second period, three to two right now. President's trophy. The Rangers are one point up over Dallas for the president's trophy. That means the number one team in hockey, Flex. Number one team in hockey. I'm still setting up here, guys. I don't know how my voice sounds, if it's low or not. Let me, hold on. Let me check my sound. There we go. I'm literally setting up on the fly because the game had already gotten underway. So here we are. Anyway, come on. I'm doing it while we're talking. Uh. Truba, OG cellar dweller accounted for. Truba's in the basement. What's up, Mike? How you doing, man? My, I, I missed the beginning of the game, Truba. I missed the beginning of the game, man. So I missed the fights. I watched the highlights while I was trying to set up here. And you guys know I was having BTDs, the basement technical difficulties. I was having that when I was setting up. So, of course, it was added on. And I lost my car keys, so I couldn't even get – there was just a whole bunch of stuff before I could actually get set up here. So, uh, as I understand it, both teams are skating with 14 guys apiece. I think there was 8 to 12 ejections. So, here we are, 3 to 2. Um, way back, another cellar dweller account for another Ozzy in the basement. Way back, and he's in the penthouse in the tipping. You and I are at polar opposites, North Pole, South Pole. That's where I am in the tipping with three whole ones correct last week. Um, come on, get it out of there. Let's go. Get it out. Uh, Lockport, OG cellar dweller accounted for. Lockport's in the basement. What's up, Lockport? Big weekend, man. WrestleMania in Philly. Big weekend. 
Big weekend, man. Uh, how are you doing, Lockport? How's everything going, man? Uh, Gunner, going back. I know you asked something earlier. Why can't Buffalo fans go one season without drama, eternal suffering? Hey, you're asking that to a Jet fan? You're asking a Jet fan that, Gunner? I know it's been – I mean, at least I know. My Rangers have been good. The Knicks have been good. Yankees just got underway. Hot start. I know they lost yesterday. I left – I had to go out there. Um, it was – Rock and I went out to dinner. So it was 2-2 two to two in the ninth. I didn't even check the score. Did the Yankees win? I didn't even look at the score. Um, 528 left in the second. I know. Buffalo, man. The Sabres, Granado, got to go. That team should have been at least, at the very least, in the wild card. It should have been in the wild card, especially after the run they had last year. The Bills trading Stefan Diggs, man. It's like it's almost like the team is re- like I told you in the dis- Discord, gonna. It's like the team is rebuilding without officially rebuilding. I know they can get a wide receiver in the draft, but you still got to gel with Josh Allen. This isn't fair to Allen. I know Diggs was a pain in the neck and the whole thing, but they should have tried to resolve some things there or get somebody else in place that's already an established wide receiver one. You still had a problem with wide receiver. T- it's just not a cool move, man. It's, I, I, yeah, what's your GM? Bean? I hope he has something up his sleeve, man, because uh, they're li- – what is – I mean, you get drafting uh, – it takes time to gel, you know? I don't hate – the Buffalo is the one team in our division that I do not hate. You guys know that. I, I feel like you, you fans are like myself. Uh as a Jet fan, struggling and eternal suffering. I agree. Uh, I agree, Gunner. There's a lot of eternal suffering, man. Lou, Lou, Lou in the basement. Lou shows up. Can you hear me? Crazy game, Johnny. Crazy watch game. Watch the highlights because you know I already had uh, – well, hold on one second, Lou. Angry Buffalo, another cellar dweller accounted for. Angry Buffalo is in the basement. What's up, Buffalo? Long time, man. Uh, Lockport was thinking of you, Johnny, yesterday, drove 19 hours from West Chase, Florida to Niagara Falls. Oh man, you were doing some trucking. Wow. You were doing some driving, man. That's my style right there. Was that like, like 22 hours? I uh, said he did it in 19. Angus, another close. seller dweller. Everybody's pouring in right now, Lou. Sorry, man. I said, I said 22. He said 19. I was close. Angus, Johnny, what's up? Saw the headline for the first five minutes in the game. I didn't see the beginning of the game. Lou saw it. Ask Lou about it. I saw the highlights. I did. As soon as that puck dropped, eight seconds into it, let me tell you, it was four fights going on that the cameraman didn't know what fights to go on, so he left it in the panoramic view, so he was watching everything. But this is the – um, I, is it Rumpy or Rimpy? Rimpy. 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 A little ramp. This is, Rimp. E. Rimpy. This is, this is the – the good and the bad side of having him, you know, saying the good side is that, you know, he's an enforcer. He blocks the, you know, he blocks the goalie, tall dude, great skills. But then you elbow yeah. somebody and you think that they're not going to forget that. You think they were going to forget that? No. And then he kind of broke the code when he uh, wouldn't fight McDermott in the beginning of the game. And then he yeah. gets ejected. Then he looks at him and does that. Yo, you no enforcer, veteran enforcers do that, man. I love oh, Rempy. Don't get me wrong, but he's got some things to learn, man. He broke the code completely. Went after a defenseless player that doesn't fight to begin with. Then he avoided fighting the other enforcer, the challenge in the beginning, which is fine. But then you wave to him like, not only did I not fight you, now I'm going to wave when I when we don't have to yeah. fight. So you knew this tonight this was going to happen. Man, let me tell you. So four, uh, uh, eight players got kicked out the first less than a minute. And then, like, two minutes after that, another four players get kicked out. It's been amazing. It's was been there amazing. a fight after the original fight? Uh, it wasn't. I think it was a, it was a, a boarding and then a taunting or something like that. I don't know the exact rule for it, but I think he was like uh, – or uh, not There is taunting. boarding and taunting, yeah. So, yeah. So, he got – somebody got kicked out of there. And then they, there was another scuffle. They got kicked out. So, 12 okay. players in total are out. You'd get ejected uh, for boarding if you drove somebody's head into the board. You wouldn't get thrown out for taunting. Boarding, you would. But maybe under these circumstances, I only saw a piece of it before I got on here. Because, you know, I got uh, home. Then I took Rocco. Then I lost my car keys. Then I, then I had connection problems. You know, usual stuff. I, otherwise, we're, we're, in we're in the basement. We're in, we're in the basement. We're in the basement, man. I was like, of course. And I, it would have aided me if I was on here not knowing where my car keys were. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> 
And you weren't on yet, and I didn't know if you were coming on or when you were coming on. So I was like, maybe when Lou comes on, I'll look for them. But I, you know. Oh, I've been watching. I've been watching since, since the button drop. Um, we dominated the first period, and now they're dominating this second period. Like, well, I'll tell you when I turned it on, so you'll know the quick two goals that Shesterkin gave up. I saw both of them. That's when I turned the TV on. So that's my yeah. fault. Laviolette will address that. That I turned the you know, Johnny turned the game on, and then we gave up two quick ones. No, because I was watching too. Those, those two goals were him having to, you know, block it on one side, and they have to go to complete opposite, you know, opposite side. So, you know, it's been good. It's been good. Oh, I know why he's whining. What's up, Lockport? But man, let me tell you, those first four minutes were incredible. I know. I'm gonna. Uh... You know they replay these on MSG. I'm gonna watch the replay. I'll watch the replay of it, man. I mean, um, everybody in the studio, Lundquist and everybody else was going crazy. I bet. Well, you know what? This isn't the first time the Rangers and uh the Devils have dropped them with the a minute the puck dropped. Not the first time. So it's pouring here, man. So he was just outside. Oh, it's it's been like that the whole time over here, too. So has it? Yeah, it's been like a monsoon here the last couple of hours. All right, well, we got uh, – we just did a nice penalty kill. Still three to two. Um, do you know if the Yankees won today? Going, uh, they won – yeah, they won in uh, in, um, in extra innings. I think they won like 5-2 or something like that. Yeah, it was the Diamondbacks, two, two. right? Rock and I went out to dinner, and one of our friends is here, man. So we were out, and then uh, – well, you know, I I'll told I'll give you the score right now. Give me one second. Well, uh, GB, another cellar dweller accounted for, another Ozzy in the basement. Good day, Johnny Rock, Rocco, and the OGs. Good day, Louis the Lip. Way back, Hawks legends. Great luck here today. I think we should have six to five. I think we should have five time today. We haven't had Yankees won six to five in in in, um, in the eleventh. Six to five. Six to five. Wow! So it was two two in the ninth when we turned when I turned it off. So all that happened after that. Wow. Shoot it! I, I didn't get to watch it, but it looks like it was a good game. Uh, Wayback said, how about them crows, Louis DeLip? Uh, hey, I'm going to rock with them the whole year. He brought his Mets uh, curse uh, to the crows. He brought the Mets <laughs> curse. Did the Mets, have they won a game? I haven't paid attention when they were. Did they win yet? They have won, right? No, we haven't won nothing. We last two games got rained out. But what oh, about that's right. um, um, Boston? I mean, I'm Buffalo. Sending digs to uh, Houston. I'm going to get into all that in a minute in between periods. Yep. We're going to get into that because uh, I got to admit, Gunner's an all-Buffalo fan, and he's like, you know what? That's why I said I don't I don't hate the Buffalo Bills. It's the only team in our division I don't because their fans suffer like like uh, like Jet fans like myself. They've been through holy hell. They actually have it worse. Yeah, four, four Super Bowls in a row. Four. And then the Buffalo Sabres now, they, they had the team last year. They need to fire – Gunner made a great point. They need to fire their coach. They need to fire Renato. The guy has not taken the team to the next level. Good, solid, young team. UPL in net for them. Guy's playing great goaltending, and you can't get them over the hump there in the same position basically they were last year. They got to get rid of them. Tough loss for the Knicks yesterday against uh, the East. Oh, Buffalo on the East, man. Uh, the Bills? Uh, no, no, I said the Knicks losing to the Heat yesterday. Oh, that, yeah, man, that, I was running around yesterday, man, and by the time I really got to watch the game, it was the fourth quarter. At least I saw it when it was close. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, but because yeah. they were down, they were down the whole game. Remember, I even texted, I was like, oh, look, typical, typical Knicks. And then next thing you know, they, they just started coming back, coming back, coming back. That new Bronson is a monster, yo. Bronson oh, is man. the greatest pick, and I'll tell you what, they're picking – They've hung in all this time with all these injuries, and now getting close to the playoff. Now you got to start dropping game after game after game. And uh, the only inexcusable one was losing to San Antonio. I mean, they're all oh, yeah, that was horrible. That I mean, was horrible. Like, losing to the Heat, and you lose to uh, who else did they lose to? They I, lost to the Heat. They lost to it was um, a good team, though. It wasn't some sucker team like the Spurs. Oh, they lost to Oklahoma City. 
Right. OKC. Okay, these are good teams. So, OK, yeah. those are kind of acceptable. But you lost to the Spurs and Blue Brunson at 61. You're fine. You don't want to – this team does not need to be in the play-in. They don't no, need to be in from, the play-in. We went from sole possession of third place to fifth after yesterday. Fifth. And what do they play again? Tomorrow? Oh, uh, they play again tomorrow, yeah. Uh, Lockport, yep. Y'all Yankees won six to five, all right. Lockport, Yankees went up four to two in the 10th. Verdugo, Homer. Yay, Verdugo and Judge, by the way, both hit home runs today. They both showed signs of life. We know some players start out hot. Some start out uh, really slowly. And, you know, New York as media always freaks out. And it's just some idiot yesterday was on social media. It was like, they need to send Judge and Verdugo down for a week to teach them, teach them a lesson. He goes, and I'm not joking. I'm serious. I'm like, yo, that, that, that's what you do. Send Aaron Judge to the minors. Yeah, that, that's what you do yeah. when he goes in a slump. That, that's a brilliant. Kill his confidence. Kill his confidence. And Verdugo, you're not getting rid of that guy's been great in the field. He's been great in the field. I'm not worried about Verdugo. And when Red Sox fans mock the, hey, how's Verdugo going for you guys? Ha, ha, ha. I'm like, ha, ha. He was the one y'all got in the trade for Mookie Betts. Don't forget. Yep. I'll trade for him. You traded Mookie Betts for him. So don't mock us that he's having a slow start. Because I'll remind the worst, Red Sox One fan. of the worst trades ever. Oh, I'll remind a Red Sox I mean, fan of that in a heartbeat. Jeter Downs, Verdugo, and a catcher. I think that's still on the Red Sox. I don't even know his name. And like so you picks. want to the Yankees for taking Verdugo? Yo, y'all traded Mookie Betts to get for these guys. Verdugo's not a bad player. I mean, you know, it just, it's just funny for them to, to ain't mock. Betts playing shortstop now? Yes. yes. And he's still cool. killing it. If, we, <laughs> if he was on one of our teams and we did that, he'd be batting 100, you know, and having problems. This is like the third position he's, he's played since he's been here. It's, it's crazy. Amazing. Truba, what a game. Yankees, 6-1 to road trip. Yeah, Truba, Yankees, Yankees. I love the Yankees. <laughs> Houston fans, Truba, and Lou, if you didn't hear, Houston had this big thing in their papers and, and news feeds and all this. All right, Yankees, yeah, throw your ticker tape parade now because you beat us four in a row. It's like, oh, uh, no, counting the end of last year, it's seven in a row now. Seven. Oh, yeah, and that's good for us. And, yeah, it is a big deal for us going to Houston yeah. and all four games. So they can downplay it or say, oh, look at them overreacting. No, it's not overreacting. No. They've, They've been, been the thorn in the – and you're behind. They've been the thorn in the Yankees behind. Right. Just like Anaheim. Anaheim is the only team that uh, – hold on. Joe Torre as a Yankee is the only team that he has a losing record to is Anaheim. I know. And you know what? During those times, it seemed like – it just seemed I might be over exaggerating, but it just seemed that every season the Yankees started out in Cali, lose the Oakland, lose to the like start against the Angels, drop two out with the great Yankee teams, not these like the great yeah. Yankee teams. Yeah, yeah. Not, every team has their team. They just cannot beat. It's just the way it is. Every team has somebody. It's like the um, Tampa for a long time was the Yankee storm. No matter yes. how bad they were doing, they just always lost to them. Always lost. And even the if they won the last place. And the Red yeah. Sox. Remember yeah. 2008, the Rays won the East, and hardly anybody can name anybody on the team. Remember Regardless, in Tampa, they had that stupid T-shirt, New Beast of the East, and they had oh, the man, crushing yeah. the Red Sox and Yankees. That, that lasted like, long. That lasted really long. It's like timeout. I'm not – I despise the Red Sox, but I'll defend them on this. Y'all ain't been around long enough to talk smack about nah. the Red Sox and Yankees, man. I mean – <laughs> you ain't been around long enough. So you had one seat. They're like, yeah, but when your Jets, I wouldn't get a shirt that showed the Jets crushing the Tom Brady Patriot thing because they beat him in 2010. And that's in the playoffs. I'm not dumb enough to do that. So, that was the uh, I can't wait. Oh, Truba nailed it. Look at that one from Truba. You could read. Yeah, Ralu, take you could read these things, man. No, one before that, trading Seaver. Oh, trading Truba, he said, well, you answer. Yeah, for Truba. Oh, trading I think the year before that was trading Seaver. Yeah, but Tom Seaver played for the Mets for a while. It's getting rid of Nolan Ryan, that young. Yeah, yeah. And Giannis I know, getting but... rid of Zdeno Chara for Alexi Yashin. Remember that one, Truba? That's one of the worst trades in hockey ever. LaMario! LaMario! Mario! What is up, man? What's going on? We got a... 
Family Lamario in the basement. Air Force, man. How's it going? How's it going, Mario? Good to see you in here, man. How's oh, it going? Man. I was getting uh getting rid of uh, Jeff Kent was bad. Um yep. I know he was on steroids, but the Lenny Dykstra trade was bad. Um Lenny Dykstra's on Howard Stern all the time. <laughs> he's, uh, he's a mess. He's a mess. He is, he is. He is a mess, yo, especially when he got kicked out of Jersey. Like, could you imagine living in a cul-de-sac area or something like that? Lenny Dykstra's moving into the neighborhood. Everybody gets excited about it. Wow, he got a former great, and he was, a great ball player right next door. They said the parties he had was so explicit and so bad and hitting on everybody's wives and, and hiring party girls and all that. Like every day, like there was drunk parties like every day there, and he, he got kicked out. Oh. <laughs> he, Dude, so Carl Crawford. Signing by uh, by Boston was horrible. That was really oh, bad. That's pretty bad. Um, that, that put him back two to three years. The Lenny Dykstra trade was Lenny Dykstra, Roger McDowell, for Juan Samuel, who said he didn't even want to stay in New York after that half season. Didn't he? Just there for the. He's just there. Oh. That was the trade. Great reliever, great player, nails right. For once, yes. oh. well, that was pretty bad. But Nolan Ryan, once and well, yeah. yeah, that was bad. No, you uh, can say Nolan Ryan because Nolan Ryan, had, uh, well, he had like ten no hitters afterwards. After that, Nolan Ryan had seven no hitters in his career and five more that went to the ninth inning before they were broken up. So he could have had twelve. Yeah, yeah, he had seven no hitters. True, but correct me if I'm wrong. But he had seven no hitters, Nolan Ryan, and five more. That went into the ninth inning before they were broken up. Pretty sure I got that right. Pretty sure. It's going pretty good, Mario. Uh, we are three nights away from WrestleMania 40. Yes, WrestleMania yes. weekend, Mario. Two Mario. days in a row. Saturday and Sunday for WrestleMania. We have the bloodline going against uh, Cody Rose and Seth Rollins. Um, that if they win or lose. And, uh, and, uh, Main event, right? Jey Uso. Well, yeah, Jey Uso versus his brother. Uh, but the main one is going to be The Rock and, and and Roman Reigns versus uh, Cody Rose and um, and uh, Seth Rollins. So if the bloodline wins, they get to pick whatever they want. They can have all the uh, bloodline there versus Cody Rose. There's no disqualification. And, and if Cody Rose wins, I think all the bloodlines have to be out. But that kind of, that kind of shows me that oh they're gonna bring all these nephews and cousins that are coming up in 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 WWE or in wrestling that are really good, or like me and Dobe was talking about uh, is Dean Ambrose coming back because Dean Ambrose is uh, out of his contract so he might come back yeah you know to to protect the shield or Gold Dust coming back because you know oh. he's always he's saying Mama Rose. Oh, it's going to be funny, man. I, it's two nights, too, Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday. Two nights, yep. Uh, yeah. Way back, are you doing WrestleMania? No, because we got family hit this weekend. We got it. Well, maybe Sunday night. I won't say no totally. Saturday, forget it. Saturday night, no. Maybe Sunday night. Sunday night, WrestleMania, I may do that. Saturday, oh, I can't. Sunday, I might do that one, though. Um. We got family here this weekend, man, so we got a lot going on. But maybe Sunday night because I think there are, a lot are leaving Sunday morning. So I'll hold I'll hold reserves on that if that makes sense. Um, did you some good some good fights, some good fights, some really good fights. Uh, Lamar, it's going uh, pretty good. We're three nights. Oh, I just read that. Gunner, I looked up the games play by play. What happened at the start? That looked to have been one massive brawl. Lou saw. It. Let Lou tell you he saw it. Like I said, eight seconds in, as soon as the puck dropped, it was pandemonium. Everybody dropped. I think everybody dropped their gloves. And it was fight after fight after fight. Like I told you, the the, the cameraman didn't know which fight to go to, so he just left it at panoramic view. And it was one, I think it was like four fights going on at the same time. That was awesome. Uh, eight players got kicked out first eight seconds of the game. Uh, like two, three minutes after that, another two, three players got kicked out. So there's, I think, in total 12 players which sucks for us because I think 
um, Miller and and uh, and the tuba train usually average 21 minutes on the ice for us. They're gone. So we're going to have um, – what's the word I'm looking for? Um, fatigue legs. Fatigue legs. Or if, uh, or if when when your line comes in, are you supposed to go in? Are you supposed to go out? Because that's not your line. That's not your official line. Are you going to go in? So there's going to have to be a lot of coaching. Coaching right now is going to be the difference of this game. It's coaching. Yeah, this is going to be crazy. The Rangers have to come out. We have a lot of third period comebacks. We dropped an absolute dud. We were figure skating against the Penguins. We were never in that game. Never in that game. But I agree. The good news is there wasn't a whole lot of those kind of games this season. <laughs> Just that Penguin game was bad from start to finish. We were figure skating. Our defense, our horrible defense, carried over from the Arizona game. The only reason we won that is because it was Arizona. That's the only reason we won that because our defense came out the same way against the Penguins tonight. I agree. Now we're missing a whole lot of people, kind of like that old Knicks Miami Heat fight. Remember that? And all the Knicks oh. players got ejected, and they kept all the superstars except for PJ Brown in place for the uh, Heat. Remember that? And no, no. And the funny thing about that that brawl, all the Knicks only took a step. They took one step onto the court after foot was on outside. Half the step was inside, the other step. And they suspended like four or five Knicks that, that, that series. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, well, they, they just took one step. What are you going to do? As a human, you're going to be like, and then, you know, take a step back. Because once you start, your brain starts to catch up. Like, wait, 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 wait. Don't go on to the freaking court. And they took one step onto the court, and there was like four or five dudes got suspended. That Absolutely was the uh, that was the uh, Van Gundy grabbing onto uh, Alonzo Mourning's leg, right? Wasn't it? Yeah, and, he was, and it took all our star players away, man. That was ridiculous. Um, I think it was like PJ Brown and all of them. Yep, I remember. Truba, there, there you go. Uh, Ryan was traded the year after their first World Series. He was twenty years old and threw a hundred and three. Fragosi was done, 35 years old and finished. The Mets didn't trade Seaver until 78 or so. He was much older. Yeah, he was much older. He did Sorry. play a lot of time. I, um, I, um, I can admit when I'm wrong. I just say, hey, I, that's what I thought. But, yeah, that Nolan Ryan trade was horrible. It was terrible. Like I said, the hockey version of that, honestly, is, and it's not because I hate the Islanders, but the Islanders trading away Zdeno Chara for Alexi Yashin was really bad. May not be the worst, but it's got to be top five. Zdeno Chara went on to become one of the greatest defensemen in hockey history. Alexi Yashin, I'll put it this way, Lou, because Lou is doing great with hockey. I know he wasn't, he didn't know it back then. Alexi Yashin would be the equivalent of the Mets' problem with uh, Bobby Bonilla, with paying him long after he wasn't even playing. So Alexi Yashin is hockey's Bobby Bonilla. But not as bad, but similar. Similar deal. I got one better, and I've always said this. Herschel Walker getting traded from Oh, yeah, Dallas. Now, that's the worst NFL trade of all time. Uh, not, well, not, not, for, not for Dallas, but for everybody else it was. And right, and at first it didn't look like it was going to be because Dallas was one win that first time around, yep. Uh, Lamario, right, the stipulation is if Cody and Seth win on Saturday, then the bloodline can't interfere in the match on Sunday. Um, oh yeah, the Ripley, the Ripley versus um, what's her name? The man, what's her, what's her, what's her name, though, boy? Becky Lynch. That's gonna be a good fight too. That's another uh, big one coming up. The Intercontinental Championship is gonna be good, um, because uh, what's this guy's name? Gunther. Gunther has held it up for like three, two to three years already. Gunther, is, Gunther won the belt in June of 2022. He beat 2022, Ricochet. yep. June That's what Dobo just said. Oh, yep. talk about Ricochet. That dude almost broke his neck yesterday, oh, the other day on Monday. Oh. I don't know if you Ricochet. saw that that, 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 spin, that that flip that he does from the top. When I tell you when he landed, he didn't land correct. He didn't land correct. And I said, oh, my dude, that dude almost broke his neck. Ricochet is one of the most entertaining wrestlers, man, because he is so acrobatic. But, yeah, yeah, for all the people like, oh, it's fake, it's this. The, it's predetermined 
uh, winners, predetermined Hold winners. On. Hold on, Johnny. Next... So, so I watched the uh, the dark side of the ring yesterday with uh, King Harley Race, right? He uh, jumped off the ropes, was supposed to land a Hulk Hogan on top of an old school table, and when he landed, Hulk Hogan kind of like like rolled off, landed on and ripped every intestine in his body. The dude had two colonoscopy bags for two years. So I know it's fake, and I know it's scripted, but those injuries, you can't... Those are real. They're real deal, man. It's funny because the people that... You know, it's true, though. I mean, when you really think about it, to say, oh, you watch wrestling, it's fake, it's this, it's that. How can you watch that? Movies are fake. Reality shows are scripted. Yeah. And, but but people get real emotional over those things. People get real into movies and series, TV series, Netflix series, whatever. Those are fake. And reality shows, for the most part, are scripted drama. So everything we watch and then we get into is fake. A lot of people think that Bruce Lee actually beat Chuck Norris in that movie like they fought for real. There's actual people that actually think that. Bruce Lee was in phenomenal, but he wanted Chuck Norris in that movie because he wanted to show that he could go up against one of the world's great he was a ten, world's greatest karate champions the guy was a 10-time champion yeah I, yeah people are like well you'd kill him in real life i don't know if he would have killed chuck Norris in real life you it's know, hard to say bruce lee didn't fight tomato him. tomato potato right. potato it's not, but the point is people really like they'll buy into all that bruce lee never fought competitively i'm not putting him down i'm just making a point but his stardom got, got so high. Jackie Chan, you know, like guys like Norris and the and uh, uh, Michael Jai White has pointed that out a few times, you know. And he loves both of them because Steven Seagal took a shot at Chuck Norris, and Michael Jai White just trashed him for that. Like Chuck Norris is like in I his eighties, still living the martial arts life, not walking around with a massive gut, you know. You know, key or massy like a stairmaster. It just, you know, that sort of thing. It just, that's all. Not to steer off on a Chuck Norris thing. Um, truly, I Ryan, I read that. Yeah, and I will be doing some Yankee games soon, but we know the Knicks and the Rangers right now is what is really what's important right now. And in October, when the Yankees are in the playoffs, the Rangers and Knicks will just be getting started, and I will be ta- they'll be taking the back seat. Playoffs I, I, is what's important right now, and I think – Check so it right resume, now. But I'm sorry, Johnny. Uh, I think oh. they play them all. Yeah, they play them all. But uh, I but think Roman Reigns is going to lose. He's going to lose on Sunday. Um, I think uh, – I know he said he has cancer and a couple of other things that's going on with him. Um, I think he's going to retire after this, just my opinion. Um, Reigns? Roman Reigns, yeah. I don't know if you looked at him recently, but his whole face is droopy. He looks, he looks, um, he hasn't fought as much as he used to. I mean, I know that when you're the champ, you don't fight as much, but I think this is going to be his last match. Just my opinion. Um, and, and then, yeah, then, good, then man. the wrestling is good. No, no. And then you have two, um, of the bloodlines, you have two, uh, nephews that are making headlines in, um, uh, independent leagues. Uh, or whatever you want to federations and that are there's two of them that are coming up that yo there I, I, I kind of missed wrestling in February and March so I missed some of this stuff um you have so one of them I forgot his name but let me that. tell you this guy is amazing I mean he's acrobatic um has technique um because I would say this when you doing wrestling it's telegraph moves you know like it went you you know that the guy's gonna uh, uh, give him a clothesline or anything like that, but these two dudes that are coming up, two young dudes that in the one is nineteen, the other one's like twenty two, uh, from the Usos or whatever you want that family that are about to come up. And let me tell you, amazing fighters, amazing fighters. Look forward to it, man. Because you know I uh, usually with the wrestling, I I tail off after. Uh, come on, the January one. You went to it. Uh, uh Royal Rumble. Thank you. Royal Rumble. After that, every year I tail off until WrestleMania because no, no you, you, you no was real, other, a couple uh, of years ago you did uh you did the SummerSlam. Oh, I've done SummerSlam, I've done uh Clash of the Castle, I uh uh Night of Champions, I've done all of them, man. But then I really realize every year, if you really pay attention, after Royal Rumble, 
until WrestleMania, that gap in between, not a whole lot changes. It's just a lot oh. of talk. I mean, there's some changes, but not a whole lot. So usually I tail off during that. And now WWE has signed a contract with uh, Netflix. So some of the events are going to be on Netflix and it's going to be rated R. So now the, all the promos are going to have curses and this and that. So that's when um when The Rock beat the beat Jeezy's out of Cody Rose, when it ended, he started cursing. He's like, yeah. I don't care, F-bomb, 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 because now they're trying to promote it to Netflix. Well, I'll see you about Sunday, guys. With third period just got underway, eighth, and that's going to be interesting on Netflix. Truba jumps oh, yeah. in when I can't do fake wrestling. Truba, I wanted to keep talking about wrestling until you said that. I was waiting for you to say that. Now I'll get back to the game. Every time I talk about wrestling, Truba loves telling me you can't do fake wrestling. That's why once in a while I talk about John Tortorella because it gets it gets the OG Truba going. Now, Panarin, right. they just showed, scored 45 goals, the most by an undrafted player since 92-93. And it's funny. they He has the most points undrafted, 770. And our man, one of my favorite Rangers, Zuccarello. Matt Zuccarello is right behind him, man. I liked him when he was a great, scrappy young player. Well, at the time, he was young. I'm going to um, leave this about wrestling. Yes, it's scripted. But... How many people have gotten really hurt? Or oh, no doubt. You know, no, Owen Hart. Owen Hart. Like a guy like Ricochet. Um, that's that's some real deal stuff right there. But no, I know, get it. so many so many people have gotten hurt doing this. And yes, I know it's scripted. But how many people watch um, soap operas or like you said, uh, um, that live, uh, which I can't stand. Oh my lord! Um, reality shows. like reality TV. Half of it is scripted anyway. scripted on a lot of them. Even, even Deadliest Catch, the, the actual catch in the crowd, they can't play around when you're doing that stuff, but the drama on Deadliest Catch, there's some scripted stuff there. Oh, uh, man. Nine total players were ejected in that first period. They're showing it now. The Rangers have 27 shots. The Devils only have 12. We're losing three to two. Again, the two quick goals were my fault for turning the TV on. Um, Fox is playing, though. So both teams are playing with 14 players, roughly, total. That's not a lot. I think uh, Miller and Tuba are probably the top players for us that, that are out. Man, I'll tell you what. The Rangers – I mean, we're going for the President's Trophy. And like we were saying with uh, – Oh, yeah, Truba. Uh, Babe Ruth, 100K, no doubt. Steven Seagal is a clown, Bruin, yes. Lamario <laughs> Hockey, this is my opinion. <laughs> Whoever wins a tag match on Saturday loses on Sunday. Yeah, I could see that. I could definitely see that. It's a good prediction. I agree with that. Um, and remember, you still have money in the bank. You still have money in the bank. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, that's all. That's they always drag that one on. They usually doesn't change. Sometimes, but not often. Um, the Rangers really need this game, man. Like, and the Rempy stuff, as you mentioned last time, you can't carry that into the playoffs. You can't. No. Nah. You're gonna hurt your team, man. I mean. That sort of stuff, and it happens in the playoffs, but you can't just start games in the first minute and do that. And, and Gunner, he has been ejected in both Devils ga uh, games. Three. Rempe Three has more. Rempe has more penalty minutes than playing minutes. I think that's still true. I haven't checked lately, but I think that's still true. Just, can anybody get the puck out from in front of the net? He's only played like five minutes against the Devils in three games. Yeah, it's been awful. But you know what, Rempe's, uh he started, he's a lot of five. But, he, I mean, the guy actually can play a little bit, but I'd like you, he's got to balance it out. Yeah. Sure, he's going to get nasty concussions, man. Like, he's taking straight bombs on his face every game. I agree with you, but I'm going to tell you one, one thing better than that. You're hurting the team. No You're doubt. hurting the team. The only reason that everybody dropped their gloves is because you broke the guy's freaking jaw not so long ago. You skated at him when he didn't have the puck anymore with your elbow out, whether it's height difference or whatever else, even if you hit him low, he still didn't have – it's like hitting the quarterback 10 yeah. steps after he throws the ball. And that is uh, – he's not a McDermott-type player, man. You know, he's not an enforcer that you're going after. And that pissed a lot of people off, man. Even I, as a Ranger fan, said that was a that was a, that was was a a definite dirty shot. I mean, he skated fast at him, too. He'd already passed it, and he kept going at him and had his elbow right out. So no matter where, because of height difference or anything else, he yeah. knocked him when he shouldn't have. This is what it That's is. why I disagree with you. But we disagree with that. I think that he was just going to hit him. 
but him being six, what, six, five, six, six, or oh, something, six, seven, you know, you're going to hit him in the face. Yeah. You can't stop that. Truly has a message for you there, Lou. Because you're the one that said it. Daniel, Daniel, welcome into the basement. Another great cellar dweller in the basement. Daniel, diehard Lightning fan, great with the hockey history. Daniel, welcome in as always, sir. Bolts three, Toronto one. I am one Ranger fan that loves Tampa, as you know, because I was down there for a lot of years, and they are uh, – they grew on me. Yeah. We've over this, Daniel, so good. That's a good score mm. right there. They should lock that up. And who mentioned Buffalo? The Sabres have 77 points, Lamario, and I know they're fighting for a wild card. But forget about catching Tampa. Forget about that. But you're about – the Capitals are 82, so you're about five points away there. For the second spot, the Red Wings have eighty-two. The Capitals have a better win percentage. But ended right, but they, forget about the Lightning; they got eighty-nine, and they're winning right now, so that'll put them at ninety-one. Buffalo has an outside don't, shot. Don't forget. Uh, I don't want to face Tampa, Donnie. I don't want to face Tampa. I don't care no, what anybody says. I don't want to face. Around. I don't want to face Tampa. No. Listen, that's we, a team that no matter what their record is, no matter who they lost, whatever, whatever, it's just they just. That nostalgia, if you want to call go, it Go, go, go. I hear you. Go, Kako. Yes, he scored. Boom, 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 boom. I saw that coming. I saw that coming. I saw it. He had to break away and hit in the upper corner. Kako, man. Good stuff. Man, 20, uh, 29s, we doubled their shots. Pittsburgh's still number six, right? Are they still six or did they move up to five yesterday? What's that? The, the Penguins. What what, what uh, position are they have right now? The Penguins? The Penguins. They're not in any position. They're done. They're done? Oh, I, I thought that I, I could have saw they saw I saw six yesterday. I'm sorry. Oh no, 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 no. They're they're fifth. They're fifth. I thought you were talking about for the Metro. No, you're talking about no, wild no, no. Card. overall, fifth. overall. That's another team I don't want to face. Certain teams, yeah. I don't care how good we do it, Johnny. I'm, they I ain't you. won anything, Lou, since they won their cup. They haven't won a it playoff series. It doesn't matter. Those, these are these are teams that if they catch fire you at the what? right time, they don't want to play us. They don't. I mean, I get your point. I get your point. I, I do get your point. You're making a great point. But you know what? For once, the Rangers, you don't want to play us. They don't oh, want to. Nobody wants us. to play us. But at the end of the day, we seen we we've seen this movie over and over again, Johnny. Over and not over this again. One. This Ranger team is not like the ones like Feels different. I've been telling I've been telling you all year they feel different, but it's just oh, I don't want to face certain teams. I'm sorry. Well, we're going to the playoffs. We're gonna be facing some of them. They're gonna be wild card right. teams. <laughs> I know, I know, but not first round. Like I don't want to face certain teams first round. So if, if Tampa wins the play-in game or if, they put, if they're in the last place, they're gonna play they're gonna play the number one team, which is us. Well, they won't be last place because I, I'm going to uh, really – they won't be. They Well, they have to have a major collapse for them. They're, they're like six – let me look before I say something. They're right That's now, close. and they're winning they're right close. now. So if they win today, they're going to be at 91 points. That's going to be at the most – right now there's seven – right now there's six, six points six ahead of – no, there's seven points ahead of Washington right now. So they win today, which it looks like they are up nine, uh, three to one. So they'll be at ninety-one points. So they're going to be the number one wild card. We won't play them. We'll play the second wild card, which would be Washington, Philly, or Detroit. As of right now, you could the Penguins could get another one. I must uh, get another three teams. Those three teams, I'm not scared of. I'm not scared of Philly or uh, or Detroit or uh, if those are the ones that make it. Uh, what are you doing? Um, Daniel, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Daniel. Daniel, I, we got to ask, Daniel, where are you at? Where are you at age-wise? Where are you at? If you don't have to tell us if you don't want to. But yeah, I know you are our hockey historian. You're always in there with me, Truba. You know your stuff. So he's over 40. Uh, over 40. 
He's over 40. I'm taking a guess. Over and under, over 40. Yep. Happy birthday, Daniel. Oh, no, he's 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 older than me. I know that much. Okay, uh, I told you. Over. Yeah, he's over 40. I'm over. <laughs> um, yeah, technically, that's over 40. <laughs> 78. Oh. Good for you. Good for you, Daniel. 78. That's what I'm talking about, Daniel. Happy birthday, Daniel. Very good. We love having you in here, sir. You're a big part of the basement. You bring great hockey knowledge. We love having you in here. Happy birthday, Daniel. And what's his team, John? The Lightning. He's a huge oh. Lightning fan. Ooh. And Daniel, <laughs> Lightning make the playoffs. I will be doing Lightning games in here also, and I will have my Lightning Stamkos or Vasilevsky jersey on. But when they play the Rangers, I won't be wearing them. <laughs> I'll be at one of the games, Johnny. I promise you. I'm not going to say all of them, but I'm I'm going to one of the games. Got to, you got to. Yeah, I want to be Thunder to, Alley. I to. And 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 I'm going in live at, at the game. Way back, no, Mister Marine. I haven't heard anything, man. I'm really concerned about him. Haven't heard anything from Mister Marine. Nothing. Nothing. He usually drops in on Ranger games. Occasional or, or football season, he doesn't like baseball. A Nick game, maybe here or there, but Rangers, yes. Jets, Giants, yes. He hates baseball. He never shows up for that. But I would expect to hear. I'm really hoping and praying that he's all right. Um, and for the uh, Bills Mafia, because I know you have a lot of Bill Mafia of fans or subscribers. I'm sorry. It's going to be tough. Oh, here we go. Daniel, Daniel, I'm I along with Truba, who just now jumped in on that. I remember when the Rangers were on Channel Nine, the Mets were on Channel Nine, the Yankees were on the WPIX Channel Eleven, uh, the Knicks. I believe the Knicks were on Channel Nine, right? Marv Albert of Radio, yes sir, yes sir. But I was a kid then, Daniel, so the remote control, we had rabbit ears. I was the remote. My father would say, turn to channel 9, turn to channel 11, fix the rabbit ears. I was a, we had one color TV and one black and white TV back then. Johnny, stop it if I'm wrong. Who changed that? The Yankees with the Yes Network. Internet, pay-per-view, all of it. I don't Remember know who personally the whole, changed it. George Steinbrenner, George Steinbrenner. Steinbrenner was like... Yes, yeah, Steinbrenner was like, oh, I'm making my own network. I'm going to do my own network. So now all the revenue well, yeah, coming in like, from this network is coming to me. He was, yo, he, as much as people hated Steinbrenner, I understand early 70s, uh, 80s, 90s, people hated him because of the evil empire, bringing in all these players. But that man revolutionized so many things in baseball that was incredible. The whole plus network thing great, was to him. made a great point. I'm just doing what baseball allows me to do. The other owners put that money in their pocket. Um, but he's an name? owner. Like he was an owner that was really into his team and winning. Not a. Uh... Is Daniel? He's seventy. He's all right. Is he? A, is he? A, I'm assuming he's a race fan, right? There you go, Truba Bob Wolf, and I think. Sorry, one second, Lou. I think Sam Rose. Well, Sam Rosa started in '84. 1984. You guys will get me on that one. I was too young. I'm uh early 50s. You got you and Truba have me beat. Yeah. Gag line, Stemma, Rolf, Fabian, Kachuk. Yep, you got that right. Sorry, Lou. Go ahead, man. I'm sorry, man. What were we saying? No, Daniel. Is Daniel 78 years old? His birthday. Is he a race fan? I would think so. Daniel, are you a Ray? Are you all Tampa now? Rays fan also? Are you Daniel usually shows up on the hockey uh, ones? Well, I know he's you know a little bit older. Rays weren't around around that time, so he might be a a fan of somebody. Judas! Else. Yeah. But if people don't don't know that the Tampa Bay Rays are only here because Steinbrenner was like, no. I know they gave you a bad presentation, went back out of his own pocket, did his own presentation and say, yo, Tampa's a great baseball fan, uh, 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 place. They're going to love baseball. 
And that's the only reason that the Rays are here is because of him. Oh, yeah. They, it's because of Steinbrenner. Yeah, and they had yeah, well, Steinbrenner Field now, but it was Legends Field for a long time. Yep. Legends Field for a very long time. Um, yeah. He's from Tampa. That's his hometown is Tampa. Steinbrenner was a big supporter of uh, of uh, baseball in Florida, man. So, you know, people can say what they want, but I like, oh, you know, you buy a team, like, even though Cohen looks like it's – you buy a team because you love the team and you want to you want to put the thing in. The, the Yankees – oh, Red Light Messina, Truba. There's a Red Light Messina. Messina. I was very young with uh, Red Light – what was his first name? Was it Stan Messina? You guys got me on that one. That's like Jim and Gordon. Huh? And that's rare that somebody got you on something. Well, I was a kid then. <laughs> I mean, I was a real kid then. I remember. I mean, uh, er the early 80s, these guys were adults. I was like in fifth grade. I'm sorry. I, 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 John, I, I forget that you're not 102 years old. That's right. I'm not. <laughs> I don't know everything, man. I forget stuff. I mean, it's like Bob Alba. It was always Knicks. Sam Rose was always Rangers and occasionally did Giants games. When I grew up, Marv Albert did Jets games. Does anybody remember that? Marv Albert and Joe Namath did Jets games. I mean, Marv Albert to me is New York Knicks basketball, period. Even when he went through that freak moment when he was when everybody found out he was a freak, New York is in biting people. And <laughs> yeah, dressing up in diapers and doing all that stuff. And, and you know what? You know what New York has said? We don't care. We just want him to call basketball. They put him back exactly. on. It. It was such a standing point. We don't care. He's a freak and he's in New York. So what? I what mean, you do in your personal time doesn't matter to me. Right. It, it wasn't doesn't... anything illegal. He didn't do anything. So it's like, you know what? He was on the radio and the New York Knicks fans were like, get it. And they brought him back. And nobody, everybody was just like, oh, whatever, man. Just call Knicks games. They don't uh, care if you're out there biting people. That's, that's, that's on your time. Oh, uh, there you go. See Daniel and Truba going off at the old school hockey. I love it. I love it. Truba and Daniel going back and forth at the old school hockey. Daniel, for you, sir, I'm going to when the Tampa Bay Lightning make the playoffs, as long as it doesn't interfere at the same time with a Ranger game, I will do Lightning games. I will do them because I watch them anyway. I like them. I will do uh, our, first, games, our, our first game was, uh, I think, it was Rangers or Lightning or Lightning somebody. It was. It was Rangers yeah, Lightning. Carolina. Night. 2022, the 2022-23 yep. season. We did that. Um, and on top of that, I wasn't even on the screen. He had me on my phone. phone. <laughs> I gotta look that exactly. up. I would, I would never forget that. Trust me, I would never forget that. You were like, Lou, you're going to come on. I, I I don't know how to work this, but I'm going to put you on the speaker. And we did it I on, put on you, the speaker. I put the phone right under the... <laughs> I gotta look Johnny, that video up. I don't up. forget, Johnny. I don't forget that. I got to look that up, man, because I remember that. Oh, I do too. I remember that. Yeah. Three to three still, 32 shots by the Rangers, so only 17 for the Devils. Shot don't matter as much as the score, man. It's three to three. And this game uh, – It's coming down to coaching. Coming down to coaching. Who are you going to put in? You got uh, six of your best players – well, uh, six of your players out. How are you going to change the line? Are you going to move this person? Are you going to move that person? It goes right. down to coaching. Mid-game adjustments. Yeah, we got some games coming up. And, uh, yeah, Truba and it is going to come down to coaching. We got the better coach, period. Now, that's being biased. That's just facts. That's just facts. Oh, it is. It is. It is. It's facts. Um. Truba and Daniel, so you guys know, when I started watching the Rangers, Eddie Mio was the goalie. Eddie Mio was our goalie when I started watching the Rangers. It's been a long time since Eddie Mio skated and graced the ice at Madison Square Garden, but that is around, so you guys realize, that's the era I started watching the Rangers. Good old Eddie Mio. Um Frazier with the running one-hander. He's fouled and yes, it counts. He'll go to the line. Oh, you're going way back Knicks now. Way back Knicks. When Knicks won championships, Walt Frazier. Walt Clyde Frazier, the greatest point guard which uh, in Knicks history. Sorry. Now, Brunson starts bringing sorry. this up. Huh? No, sorry to bring this up. The worst was Patrick Ewing 
and set up dunking it, goes for a layup, and misses it. You know what's funny that is, was, and I agree with you, that was terrible. That was terrible. But you know what else is terrible? That in New York, that's what Ewing's remembered for, not being one of the greatest centers of all time. And so many people bring that up. And, um, and, and no, you're right. And I, he I should be. He, yo, that dude averaged over 30 points for how many years? The dude was over 90%. And I'm going to say this. I, 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 I'm not looking at stats. I guarantee he was 90% of the free throw. Anything oh, man, would... Let me tell you something. You're right. But you know what? We remember Ewing for this. They remember Charles Smith for missing the five layups, which we could have won that game against the Bulls, right? He missed five layups in a yeah. row. But yet John Starks is so beloved. He blew that game six missing against Houston, missing uh, Ewing wide open in the paint. And then he couldn't hit the side of a barn in game no. seven. But yet everybody no, not the barn. Charles. Not the barn. He could have hit the ocean if he tried. Right, but he's so beloved by Nick fans. Why? I, I, he was, oh, he was overrated, and he always, he always freaking melted in big situations. But he's the given only passes reason... for these things in Ewing and Charles Smith. They always, oh, remember this? Remember when Ewing this? And but Starks is always given a pass. Always given a the pass. The reason why I never liked Starks was uh, one game against um, Indiana, Chicago. Oh, Chicago. No, no, it was against Chicago. Uh, Scotty Pippen gave him, you know, stole the ball, gave him a crossover, and he tripped him. Tripped him? Yeah. Oh, you know the one? I, you know, I don't remember that one. I'd have to look that one. Oh, up. I do. I would never. You know what I remember up. against Chicago? The no, he didn't dunk on Jordan. Jordan came in from the side. Oh, he didn't did. dunk the on smith, him. Smith, yeah. oh, no, no, the, no, that was a stark dunk. Nah, he came from the weak side. He came from the week. It's the not week like guy. he straight Come up on. banged on him. It's like, and the angle they show the the poster, you know, the the oh, we, poster. We, John, we they seen, show we an that. angle as if he jammed we've on seen, Jordan. He John, we see every angle from that dunk. Every angle. He came from right. the weak side. Come he on. He came from the weak side. You didn't bang on him, man. It's just, I'm sorry. And, and Nick Van's like, yeah. and I am a Nick no. fan. You want to like, hear the worst like one stuff. ever? No, no, no. I don't like Starks, but I'll tell you the worst one ever. I'm saying me neither, man, but that's what people say. Well, you don't like I'm like, dude, just watch it and tell me that he didn't straight up bang on oh, Jordan. It was against, if I'm not mistaken, it was against the Knicks. Uh, Jordan was out. Timeout. Uh, they drew, a, they drew a, a play for uh, Tony Kukoc, and Pippen was like, no, and he set out. Yeah, Pippen because set he was getting the last shot. Yep. And what happened? Kukoc, Kukoc. And killed it. He would never let that down ever, ever. Pippen, uh, ever. he's just he's a hero. He thinks he was the goat. I mean, <laughs> see, come on. Man. Oh, he was nasty. Don't get me wrong. He was nasty. He was, he was but nasty. come on, he's he comparing was, himself to you know, and he downs Jordan. That's just ridiculous. That I can agree with, but his defensive play, who coach from from fingertip to fingertip was over seven feet wingspan. It was crazy, and his right. defense was awesome. Um, it's just, dude, you mad at Jordan because your son is dating your ex-wife? Like, come on. I know, it's ridiculous. Did he get hit in the throat? The it's devil's penalty, yeah. Talking in? Did, did Puck hit him in the throat? I think it ricocheted up and hit him in the side of the throat. Oh, it hit him in the, in the jaw. We got a minute 40 left on this power play. 556 left in the game. Three to three. Yeah, he got... That thing came up, ricocheted, and banged him right under his uh, under his under face. His guard. Yep. Now look, the goalie that's cold on the bench. If he has to come in, he'll be Martin Brodeur because oh, he's playing. He, he, he won't give up. He won't give up. A, he won't give up nothing. 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 No, we've seen this before. Oh no, true, but it was Charles Smith. Charles Smith missed the five layups. We're talking about Ewing not taking the dump. We are. We're talking about Ewing and Charles Smith. Charles Smith missed oh, that was five bad. layups. Yeah. Ewing missed the dunk when he just when he when he tried to lay it in. He missed the dunk. But we're talking about how those two guys get ridiculed for that. And John Starks is remembered as some great Nick. He didn't. He blew Game Six against Houston. He was horrendous in Game Seven. Reggie Miller did a Mike Tyson on him. Just talked him out of his game before it even started. The dude, I, I don't understand why Starks is so beloved by Nick fans. I, I don't. I can't. The guy has blown more games. I can't stand than him. 
He's the only Nick that I hate. He should be remembered for one missed shot that he tried to lay it in instead of dunking it. I mean, yes, that was horrible, but I mean, that should not be the thing he's remembered for. At least I not guarantee you, go look at his free throws over 89%. Um, anything over 16 to 17 feet, water. That little turn that he used to do, a little fadeaway. Ooh. Oh, Yo, man. you was the yeah. man. Just like Lundquist, they should have gotten a ring. A minute 11 left on this power play. Starts with a cement mason through one brick after another. Yes. Amen. Amen. Told, Truba, you find so many fans love them. No, 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 no. But they told them because it, there was an interview about that that playoff run or that championship game. They told them keep on shooting. Keep on I shooting. Yep. Well, you're going to tell them keep on shooting. How about hitting some? I gotta take a quick break, real quick, Donnie. I'm sorry. Hold on. Oh no, you go ahead. Go ahead. Nick Paul, goal, four to one bolts. There you go, Daniel. Yes. Chris Kreider, four to three Rangers. Come on, let's go. Under five minutes left. Let's go. Yes. brings it up. Fox. Ryder is killer. Killer. Dangerous in front of that net. Whoo! No one does it better than Kreider. I know there's a few guys that are real dangerous in front of the net, but man, he's Kreider is just a beast. Beast. Four to three. That was a huge goal right there. 449 left in the third period. We got 37 shots on goal. They have 17, man. This is just. Now, look at that. They come right down the ice and shoot on us. That's what I'm talking about. I have not been impressed with our defense as of late. Now, I know there's guys ejected in this game. I'm talking about overall. The Arizona game. Congrats to Crowder for 300 goals. Congrats to uh, Jonathan Quick for 392 uh, to become uh, sa uh, saves. Wins, 392 saves. Now, that would be really bad, <laughs> really great for a game. But anyway, um, all-time American goalie leader with 392 wins. But yet you gave up five goals to a doormat Coyotes team. Our defense, just like against the Penguins, man, they were just figure skating out there. Non-existent. The only reason we won that game, five goals we gave up and won that game because we were playing Arizona. That's why we won that game. It's unacceptable the way this defense is looking. I mean, they only have 17 shots on that. Well, now 18. And we've given up three goals. A lot of them, uh, where our defense is nowhere to be found. Now, I know, that again, there's ejections tonight. But, again, look at the Penguin game. We just goal after goal after goal. Tighten this up. Tighten this up. We got Philadelphia next. That's the last technical playoff team we're going up against. And we got the Islanders, who probably want to beat us really badly. I got the rest of the schedule right here. Okay. Thursday, Philadelphia, 7 o'clock. Saturday. Islanders, 1230, Saturday. And we finish up with Ottawa on Monday at 730. So that's our remaining games right now. Detroit, Montreal, Islanders, Philly, Islanders, and Ottawa. So our last three games of the season is Philly, Islanders, and Ottawa. None of these games are easy. None of them are. Detroit is fighting for a wild card spot. Forget about Montreal. The Islanders are fighting for a wild card spot. Philly, Ottawa. Ottawa and, um, and Montreal are teams that are not even in it. But that doesn't matter because New York teams have a – we have a habit of losing to teams like that. So, uh, based with technical difficulties, where's my screen? There it is. All right. Tomorrow, Bolts versus Montreal. Now, that should be a, that, that should be a win. That should be a win. You're going to have 91 points after today, Daniel. I, unless, unless the Lightning have a complete meltdown, I, I can't see how they don't make the number one uh, spot on the wild card. I don't see how they don't make the number one spot. And again, they'd probably be further than that had not Vasilevsky missed the first couple months of the season. That was debilitating for them. 
Losing Vasilevsky, who is still, you can still argue he's the greatest goalie in the game. Igor is going to take over that position, but he, up through last year, he was the winningest goalie in the game for the past five seasons with two rings. With two rings, two championships. So they're nobody to sneeze at, the Lightning. I know that, you know, they might, they don't want to become the stepping stone team. But I was very surprised. And I know Truba remembers. Truba and I both said in that first round last year that uh, the Lightning were going to beat Toronto in six. We didn't see them losing to the, Toronto beating the Lightning. Didn't see that happening. So the last time the Lightning got knocked out early, 2019, when they were the number one team and lost to the Blue Jackets with Tortorella coach. And I remember that? I know you don't want to remember that, Daniel. I didn't like it either. But you're up and you got swept. Swept. And then what happened after that? They won the next two cups. Went to three in a row, won the next two. So they got knocked out in the first round last season. Let's see what they do this season. Chris Kreider has become the third all-time power play goal leader on the Rangers. Zabanajad is uh, fifth all-time. He's only one power play goal behind Jobert. Wow, you're talking big names here now. Well, Kreider is a big name. He's one of the most famous Rangers of all time. We got to get him a ring. Bruin, go Bolts. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, I told you guys, I lived in Tampa for a long time. They grew on me. I liked them a lot. Not more than the Rangers, but I'll go for them over anybody else. Uh, Daniel, big win for the Bolts if the score holds up. Yeah, Daniel, I'm looking at it right now, and I lost my screen. But the wild card, where did it go? Oh, here it is. They'll have 91 points, Daniel. 91. So you got the Capitals with 82. If, if, if it ended right now, I mean, if it ended today, it's a lightning in the Capitals as the wild card teams. But the Capitals, Detroit is right there. They're only like half a percentage winning point, uh, win percentage behind the Capitals. They flip-flop. And then you got the Islanders who are 81. There's a whole big mess there. The Penguins are at 79. Not a lot of games left, but there's enough for a whole lot of this to flip-flop. And for you Buffalo guys, Gunner, Lamario, Lockport, Buffalo's at 77 points, but they're five points behind Washington. That's a lot of leapfrogging and a lot of praying, but they're technically still in it. They're technically still Johnny, in it. We took the lead, Johnny. We took the lead. I know that matters. Leave again, Lou, so we can get another goal. The minute you the minute you said I'll be right back. I know, I know. I, I had to put the dog away because I have company All over. All right. 238 left in the third period, four to three Rangers. We have this big uh American pit bull that's oh, humongous. Oh, you met him. You met him. You met these before. Oh, yeah. He almost he almost, he almost scratched your jersey and, and broke two of your beers. Oh my gosh, that was my Super Curtis Bowl. Martin jersey, man. <laughs> But we that still got him. Last, yeah, that was one of the last. Actually, believe it or not, that was the last month. That month that I had drinks. That was it. That was yeah, February. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Yeah. Oh, over two years ago. That was the last time that I had drinks. Big go. Big go, Johnny. Big go. True, but Crider's jersey is definitely. Yeah, it's going to the rafters. And I have a Crider jersey thanks to my son who got me that for uh, Christmas. I'll tell you this. I'm not burning any of my jerseys. I don't care what who, who does the hell what. burns jerseys, no. man. They're not real fans. Let me tell you something. Two minutes left in the third. Come on, Rangers. Hold on. Bring it back up. Guys that burn their jerseys, especially. Hold on. Panarin, shoot that. Oh, how did he save that? Uh, how did he save that? Trocek should have had the goal. What a great save. Wow. Even if I had the money to burn the jersey. Oh, look at this save. Hold on. Look at this save. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm waiting for it. Oh, Vinny missed the puck. But still, Vinny, man, we needed that goal. Insurance goal. Oh, he still could have gone in. Great save by Cockinen. Even if it's two minutes, it's still not over yet. It'd be two seconds. This is a New York team we're talking about. <laughs> Yo, Come John, on, I'm happy real. you came on during this game because I promise you, I was texting you right from the puck. I was like, are you watching this game? Well, I'm, gonna, I'm 
the Knicks are on at 7.30 tomorrow night. I'm trying to be on for that, too. But the rest of the weekend, guys, maybe WrestleMania Sunday. But after tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, I will definitely not be on. Definitely not. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> that is a guarantee. Empty net for the Devils right now. You know, we do empty net. The other team scores immediately. Oh, yeah. Look what Pittsburgh did to us. Two of them. Two of them. When we when the other team has an empty net, we can't we can't even get the puck. Though we did have a couple games, but I'm just saying overall it feels that way. I'm um, just glad you came on for this game, Johnny, because I promise you, right from the puck drop, it's been crazy. Jack Hughes almost hit that man. He hit the post. I know, man. But you know, we went out to dinner, and my plan was to come on when I got home. And I'm glad the I'm fight actually hurt. held the game up a little bit, so I didn't miss too much. But then. The connection was bad because of the uh, all the rain we've been getting for three straight days. Then I couldn't find my car keys, so, you know, basement technical I, difficulties all around. I guess you must have looked at the time. You were like, oh, they're in the second going into the third. I said, no, they're still in the first. It's still like six minutes in the first. Well, when I, that's why when I called you, I said, well, what is it? You He's like, oh, no, it's five minutes left in the first. That's 45 minutes after the game started. I was like, oh, good, good. Well, technically, 5.50. Oh, get it out of there. Come on. Look at that. The Devils are right in front of our net with 30 seconds or 40 seconds left. Uh, Come on, man. We have the puck, Lindgren. Get rid of it. Uh, here we go. It's going to be one of these finishes. Come on. Yes, always, always, Johnny. Come on. You know it. Yeah, we don't get the puck. Come on. We don't We don't, We don't. don't get an a, a easy victory here. Get that. Uh, Come on. Of course not. Nine, eight, they're coming down the ice. Good interception. Take that, Panarin. Oh, we got it now. We got it now. Boom, 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 boom. We got this. That was a big win. Not big because win. it's it, it, big it, win. It, who we who we're facing? History, bad blood. Um, eight seconds into it, Johnny. Eight seconds. Eight players get ejected. Eight players. Not one, eight not play two, but eight. Oh, good night, Daniel. Daniel, good night. I'll be back on tomorrow night for the Knicks. I promise you, Daniel. You Happy you, birthday, you're Daniel. We're going to do lightning playoff games. We're doing lightning playoff games also, sir. I promise you. Put it in the books, Truba. GB, yep, Bruin. I'm, I'll chill out for a little bit, man. Just BS a little bit, and then I'm going to go. But we're not. I'm not going to get off yet. What were you saying, Lou? Well, happy birthday to Daniel. Yes, Daniel, we are going to do lightning games, I promise you. And Lou should be at some of those games. He lives there. Oh, yes, I will. If if, if we go at least two, at least two, I'm, a, I'm going to. Yeah, you got to. You got to. Yeah, man. I will. I will. Never been to a hockey payoff game either, so. Oh, uh, it's, it's especially down there, man. Thunder Alley, oh. the whole atmosphere. I love it. Love it. Absolutely love the atmosphere. You get sold on them right away when you lived it. Yeah. Well, they, well, think about it. The Bucks and the Rays. The Thunder Alley was kind of kind of like the first. I know you have uh, Milwaukee did it. Uh, I know um, Toronto Raptors did it. But the Thunder Alley was one of the first play, uh, places that was showing you the game outside of the stadium with a DJ, with, with bartending, oh, yeah, with and everything else. Yes. Here's a question, and I'm going to come right back down. Here's a question. Truba. Truba, stick around. Bruin, Jackie Robinson Day, where every team wears the number every year, was started by who? Who started that trend? Now, it wasn't 5,000 years ago. You guys know the player. You guys, he's a Hall of Famer. Who said, hey, we need to acknowledge Jackie Robinson Every, what is it, April 16th, April 15th, round there. Jackie Robinson Day, what player said we should do this every year? Who did it? I'll be right back. Or how many players actually wore 42 when that happened? I can only tell you one, but I think there was two. Doubleheader tomorrow. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Look, uh, Truba, I have no expectation for the best this year. No expectation. I don't – I'm not going to say we're going to make the playoffs. I'm not going to say, hey, if we're in contention, 
you know, we have enough money to get the best um uh, free agents on. I, I have no expectation, no expectation. It's been horrible. We missed out on so many great players. Uh, Soto, uh, Otami, even the pitcher that your uh, pitcher from Japan that was supposed to come down here. Um, now we didn't pick up. We didn't pick up so many great players that we have the money to do and nothing. So how can you expect me to be excited over a team that's mediocre for the last couple of last two years? And then not pick up nobody. Come on. Yes. Yes, Lockport. Rivera is one of them. Number 42. Uh, there's, I think there's one more. And Truba, I know you were going to get it. Bruin, you oh, got it too. I don't know why I said that. Tomorrow night I will not be on. Go ahead. John, how many players were 42 when they started the whole Jackie Robinson thing? Well, obviously Rivera. Everybody got that one. I think there was one more, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I don't know. I'm not good with baseball jersey numbers. Football, yes, not baseball. But everybody got it. Uh, Bruin got it. Lockport got it. Uh, yes. Truba got it. Uh, Truba. Got it. Truba, you nailed it. Ken Griffey Jr. started the trend. Ken Griffey Jr., 1997. Very good, Truba. Uh, what a game, Johnny. I'm glad you came on, Johnny. I'm yeah, glad too. you came on because I promise you, you look at my text message. They're all in caps. Are you watching? OMG, look at this, look at that. It was amazing. From from the first eight eight seconds, they went in. Oh, they definitely did. Lou, so, uh, you just said something to you. Yeah, doubleheader tomorrow. Yep, doubleheader. And like I was I telling him, I have no... tomorrow, by the way, guys, what am I talking about? I, I won't be on that. Family comes in tomorrow, Friday, Saturday. So, guys, earliest I'll be on will be Sunday. But just right now, forget about me till Monday. But I'm not disappearing for a month. Don't worry. No Lou, expectation for the Mets. My health is coming along. But I got Lou on here. So, if I need half-hour breaks, I just give it to Lou. I'll be here. But seriously, Johnny, no expectation for the Mets. No expectation. No I, I'm, I, I've I'm been off social media. I'm not texting my family, not texting my friends, not even texting you. I have no expectations. Um, I know that Uncle Steve was like, oh, we have to make the playoffs. He came on the interview earlier today. was like, oh, yeah, you know, it's still early. We're all going forward. But, you know, teams usually have bad streak. We're just having it now. No. Like, what can you show me that we've done that we can tell me that we're going to be good this year? Nothing. Hey, at least you have the Marlins. The Marlins are competing with you guys for the – I know what you're saying, though. No, they're going to end up better than us. Well, I was texting one with thing, Froge. He said Froge said they're going to be 0-10 soon. He thinks they're going to no, be worse. One thing, about, one thing about the Marlins that people forget about, their minor league system is incredible. They've always been good. Not saying that they keep their place. Look at the dude that they had yet last year. They almost hit 400. Was batting 400 for most of the year. The second baseman, if I'm not mistaken. They end up trading him, but you, you have a uh, what's his name, Jism or Sism or something. The outfielder is really good. That he does the uh, the Euro step when he scores. He's awesome. They don't miss neither. They don't miss. Oh, they don't, they don't miss. Have, they don't have the money to keep him. Good night, Bruin. Good night, Truba. Thanks as all night, guys. I will not. I said I was, but I will not. I don't know why I said that. Because we're in the basement, that's why. But I won't be. Just forget about me till like Monday. Yeah, Maybe you, Sunday, but on, just Truba. forget about me till Monday. Truba, huh? Truba, you know Judge ain't no midget. Come on, get out of here. That dude's a monster. Where you know who else? I mean, we need Gardini back here. Well, we're gonna be like I said, we're gonna be doing baseball games right now. Playoffs is what's oh. rolling right now. Play I'm sorry, team. guys, but Gardini, Gardini is still one of my favorites. Oh, Gardini's still awesome. one of my favorites. He did a great job when he came out with very us. Very knowledgeable. Very yes. knowledgeable. For he young that. Oh, he's like, what, 31, 32 years old or something like that? Very he's knowledgeable. Gone. Try like 23. Oh, excuse me. Even, even, very knowledgeable. Yeah. Very, he knows yo, history. He knows Definitely. things that I, he know, he's probably forgotten more than I, than I could remember. Seriously, being, being honest. He's awesome. It is a pretty good game. Yeah, you got, no, no, it's true. Very true. He, he did a great job. 
He was good on you. I told him he should get his own channel starter or his own podcast. Or... Dude, you remember when, when he came on, I had my luchador mask on? <laughs> you were changing every done. inning. Every inning you had something different on. <laughs> um, oh, that's a good game right here, Edmonton and Dallas. We need Edmonton to win this game. The President's Trophy, Dallas is only one point behind us. We need Edmonton to win this game. Ah. Uh. Edmonton needs to win this game. I will not be watching the whole game, but it's this is a great game, actually. It's a great I'll be honest, Johnny. I have not been this excited for hockey in my whole life. Lou, you put, Lou, you put a hell of a lot of work into this, man. Lou just got into hockey, what, two years ago? Three? Maybe three. Maybe three. Let's, Let's say, say three. three. We need three. And he has put a lot of work in. He texts me all the time during games. He, and and when Lou gets into these things, he gets into them because he's a sports fanatic. So he's really, really been into the uh, Rangers. Look and what, to, look his what I'm credit, doing. to his credit, to his credit, the Stewie's not even AFL. a Knicks fan. <laughs> he's not. Hold on. What about what about the AFL? I'm into the, the AFL. AFL. Yep. So, uh, Lockport. Good night, GB. Have a great night. Schnazzy, Schnazzy. What's up, man? We're not going to be on much longer, brother. But Schnazzy. Snazi is another cellar dweller accounted for a brother. Big win by the Rangers. Gurdini is my age. Bruin, I forget that you, I forget that you are oh, also yes. 23. And Bruin knows a whole lot of stuff. Raleigh, the cellar dweller accounted for. Raleigh's in the basement. Uh, yes, Raleigh Diggs is gone, and I feel okay about it. Excited for the future. Damn it, Dallas scored. Um Diggs, yeah, I know, Raleigh, that's a huge loss, but I, I hate the fact that they look like they're rebuilding, Raleigh. Like, Josh Allen deserves better than that. Sorry, Lou, I'm just blowing through somebody. Not blowing no, through. no, no, John, I told you last year, I told you. Buffalo you can read these chats clothes. yourself, too, man. You can read Remember them. Remember I told you? No, it was on the phone. I told you, Buffalo's window is closing. It's closing. It's closing fast. Well, if the Jets stay healthy, I'm not even being biased. They're going to take that division. Hopefully. If they stay healthy, yeah, I'm only they the listen, it's the off season. The it's our time. Off season they're champs. The it's our time. They're the Jets. At the end of the day, they're the freaking Jets. Yeah, but you know what? You know what's you know what I don't like if the whole team stays healthy? I don't like our coaching staff. I like Greg Ulbrook. I like our defense. I'm talking about I don't think Salah makes the greatest decisions. And you know, but the Jets are definitely a play. Let me put it this way. If Cincinnati had signed Mike Williams. Tyron Smith, Morgan Moses, John Simpson on the line, and then they got Reddick. You would hear nothing about what a monster since he's going to be, but because the Jets did it, it's like like Colin Coward, for instance, and I like him. I watch a lot of him, and I like a lot of his takes. Colin said, all he talks about is about how Reddick is getting aging. Nick Wright did this too, aging, getting a little bit older. He, he's the same age as T.J. Watt. They don't say that about him. And they don't compliment, is Reddick or Reddick not, a compliment to an already amazing defense. He's a complimentary amazing. piece. The Jets would still have an amazing defense, even if they didn't get him. So to, to bring up Reddick and start talking about, well, he's a guy getting a little bit older. They don't talk about T.J. Watt like that. He's 29. They what if the really Cowboys had got Reddick year. on the opposite side of Micah Parsons? Would you be hearing this kind of talk? No way. So the Jets just, without without a number one, well, without their number one quarterback, like we spoke about it, they didn't get blown out last year. And maybe and they beat Philly. They were the first people to beat Philly, and they were the first ones to stop the the the, the brotherly push. Oh yeah, and 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 uh, yeah, Raleigh, I agree with you. As long as you have Josh Allen, the window is never closed. I agree with you there, Raleigh. And yeah, going back to that, the Philly fans say, "Well, the Jets beat us because they lost one of their great linemen." Philly did during the game. It's like the Jets it didn't matter. have Charles Gardner or DJ Reed playing in that game. They still intercept, turned the we, ball. We didn't have times. our best quarter. We didn't have the. We didn't even have Aaron Rodgers that we beat you. The person right. that we banked on the whole entire yeah, year, Zach Wilson. Yeah. Now listen, so, we had an O line that was beaten up, sixty four sacks given up, third worst in the league. They still won seven games. You got Brees Hall who had nine hundred ninety four yards and seventy six catches with four different quarterbacks, bad O line. Garrett Wilson had over a thousand yards receiving again with bad O line, double team, four different quarterbacks. So and Hall was coming up a horrible injury. Remember, people forget right. Hall blew his whole knee out, his whole knee out. 
So we didn't even right. know what we was getting from him. So it's a joke when everybody's all oh, they're healthy. No, if this was any other team, it would be great moves and all of that. They talk about injuries. But when Joe Burrow comes back, for instance, he's been injured a lot in his career. They don't talk about, well, if he gets injured again. No, it's all it, so you know what? I blame- like Brees Hall said. Brees Hall said, let them all mock us now, let them all laugh. But these guys are monsters. So if it's a healthy team, what are these guys gonna do with a healthy team? Now we'll see. I blame, of course, I blame the general manager for last year. Because I know you, you banked everything on Aaron Rodgers, but what was your backup plan? What was I your agree, backup plan? I agree, but you got to remember whoever was in there, 64 sacks given up. Yeah, but 64 sacks against who? Yeah, but Zach ran the ball. He ran around. But he, how some of those shots, it, it's, it, it's easy to blame everything on Zach because, unfortunately, he was immature his first two years. He did have some yeah. games last year. He looked pretty good. He did three have some. Three different coaches? Three different coaches? How can how can you? I think they had establish- sixteen different lineups on the offensive line. Reese Hall still used nine hundred ninety-four yards. How can you learn a system coming in your second or third, maybe your third year? Uh, no, it was only two for the two years, and learn an offensive scheme when you have multiple different coaches, multiple different things. It's hard. It, we always come back to this: is where you get drafted. No matter who you are, no matter what how how big of a talent you are is where you get drafted. If you get drafted to a horrible team, I'm sorry, your talent is going to waste for the first six years. You know, you have, look at Trevor Lawrence right now with, with the Jaguars. If you really look at it, he has the same stats as Daniel Jones. The same stats. Look at a back to, you know, identical. It's just where you get drafted at. Sorry. What's your volume? Oh, you I'm, can, you hear, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. I lost you there oh, for a minute. I, so it's, it's where you get drafted. No matter how good of a talent you are, if you get drafted to a horrible team, your talent is going to waste. Um, Trevor Lawrence has the same stats. Look it up. The same stats as Daniel Jones. Same identical stats. Um, it was by two or three points on each stats. And I'm not saying Daniel Jones is, is the savior because he's not. I don't believe in him. But I think the Giants should, should draft the, uh, the wide receiver from LSU. That dude's a monster. Don't go after the quarterback from North Carolina because seriously, we did that before. And look what happened. We drafted him from Duke and nothing. You guys love drafting quarterbacks from Duke. Daniel Jones, Dave Brown. But Come on. Raleigh. Oh, Truba, the heavy wide receiver draft. Bills will draft a great wide receiver and, and uh, uh, Diggs is a cancer in the locker room. I agree with he's a cancer. He was definitely cancer last year. I just think they should have an established wide receiver to replace him. The draft is great, but you got to gel and start all over again, building relationships there. I agree with Truba, by the way, Raleigh. I do not think Burrow is overrated. Burrow came to a very, very bad, bad Bengals team. Now, he – Burrow goes against the grain that you can't win without an offensive line. That Super Bowl Burrow went to with the Bengals – their O-line was one of the worst in the NFL. And I believe in the championship game against Kansas City the week prior to the Super Bowl, when they came back down 21 nothing, that I think he got sacked nine times in that game. I think it was nine times. And then he went to the Super Bowl and got sacked a lot. I know he lost to the Rams. Burrow is definitely not overrated, but I'm worried he's injury prone. I think Burrow Trevor might Lawrence. be injury prone because he's actually Trevor Lawrence, I think, I think it was like his first Tito or second. Burrow on my team. What's that? Uh, um, um, What's that? Uh, I just hold on. I just lost concentration. Um, Edmonton is down one nothing. Jacksonville. The dude from Jacksonville had one of the worst playoffs ever. I think he threw like five interceptions in the first uh, first half. Oh, Trevor Lawrence, and they yeah, came back to win. Trevor Lawrence, yeah, he had a horrible start to his, you know his playoff. But your talent a- will come through. But sometimes. When you get drafted by a horrible team, doesn't matter how good you are, you're not gonna, you're not gonna do it. Just not. Yep, Raleigh. Uh, I'm not putting the Jets down. Truba, I'm not putting the Jets down. They have a great team, but Zach is not. Oh, I agree with you, Truba. I mean, Zach showed some signs. I think if he had a better coaching staff, I mean, he has shown signs, but I think he just ruined his time in New York. But they definitely need to release him. The Jets made the mistake. Like this year, they have Tyrod Taylor as a backup. If he stays healthy, that's a great backup 
quarterback if he can stay healthy. The Jets team overall, they have a beast defense. And the, the narratives against the Jets, when you really watch these shows, when you watch these shows, they don't like talking about Reddick, but they don't talk about the Jets defense as a whole because they know how great they are. Reese Hall yeah. and Garrett Wilson are the Jets' only weapons on offense. Mike Williams stays healthy. With Aaron Rodgers back there, watch out. I don't care about what Aaron Rodgers believes in, doesn't believe in, if he wants to be the host of Jeopardy later on or run a political <laughs> career. You know what Jet fans care about? Win a freaking Super Bowl. I don't care if he's a tinfoil hat guy or whatever he does. I want him to come back pissed off and win something. Do I think they're going to win the Super Bowl this year? I just want him to make the playoffs, and then we'll talk. Let me see how the season goes. I'm not jumping to Super Bowl and all this. I'm not. I'm cautiously optimistic. When you have monsters like Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson, who, by the way, two years in a row got over a thousand yards receiving, two years in a row with four different quarterbacks and a horrendous offensive line play, that says a lot. Especially when his draft status was he wouldn't be a wide receiver one in the NFL. He's too short. Maybe be a great slot receiver. The dude is a wide receiver one. Now you got Mike Williams who has the most yards per catch more than anybody since 2019, I believe. He stays healthy. Watch out. This team can be very, very dangerous. But because and of the history of the on. And, and Buffalo is losing all their best players. They lost eight of the top ten players, if I'm not mistaken. Buffalo, Besides, you know, Allen, you know, but Buffalo lost a lot of great players on defense and offense and offensive line. They lost a lot of players. So they're not going to be the Buffalo team that we've seen the last six years. Um, they have Josh team, Allen, and that has been, and I'm being serious, Josh Allen has been, feels like 80% of their offense. And the dude is amazing. He's carried that team. And the narrative on Josh Allen is starting, you see how the media is? It's starting to change on Josh Allen because they bigged him up big in the beginning, which was correct. And now, oh, well, he doesn't win anything. He can't win. Dude, the guy has lost to Patrick Mahomes, who's gone on and won Super Bowls. And it wasn't last playoff, Josh Allen did nothing wrong. Hold on, John. And it wasn't his fault. If you look at all the playoff games, my man has played his lights out. It's right. just whoever got the ball last was going to win. But it right. wasn't. It. And who has he lost to? Patrick Mahomes. I mean, I know he lost the borrow one. Listen, the guy hasn't lost the scrubs. He hasn't lost because of him. Look at all the drop passes in his last playoff game. They're like, look at Josh oh. Allen. Can't win again. The media is turning on him because he didn't live up to their narrative. Because the media, with a lot of these young players, oh, well, they got to be Joe Montana or Brady right off the bat. You remember the remember the game against Minnesota last year? Was it last year? Uh, Minnesota, they score like 50 something points each, and we're going back and forth, back and forth, yes, back and forth. Yes, 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 yes. I remember that. He was lights out. He's always, when, yo, when the lights are on him, my man plays lights out. It's never his fault that they lose. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll stand by that. No, it's true. Listen, Josh Allen, is, he's the running back. He's the whole offense, man. The guy, oh. he reminds me of John Elway in the 80s carrying. Teams that didn't have all the weapons, but they made it to Super Bowls and made it far. I know Allen hasn't made a Super Bowl yet, but made it far on his arm and his legs and his smart ability at quarterback. John Elway did a lot his of that in the 80s. Johnny, his legs are amazing. They I are. The, the beginning of the season, Elway, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't running. This, the beginning of the season, he wasn't running. But once he saw that they oh, weren't winning, they were going up, he just started running and running and running and running and running. Yo, he led, he led his, his team. In rushing yards in multiple games, how is that your quarterback? It's true. Your I, think he, quarterback. I think he was leading rusher in eighty percent of the games, and yeah, Truba one hundred percent. John Elway carried teams. John Elway carried teams to the Super Bowl. Just ran into buzz saws like Joe Montana and the Forty Nine ers, the Giants and Lawrence Taylor. Then the one that everybody thought they were going to win is when they played Doug Williams uh, and the Redskins in that Super Bowl. And they lost, they got murdered in that one. I think it was 42 to 10. And that's when Timmy Smith was the leading rusher in Super Bowls. I think he had 236 yards rushing in that time. But he had Doug Williams at quarterback. Gary Clark was one of the wide receivers was there. Ripken, was Ripken, was Ripken, was Ripken the, the, the quarterback? Uh, Ripken was the quarterback for the Redskins in 91. Doug Williams was the okay. quarterback gotcha. in 87 when they beat the uh 
Broncos. Now, Joe Gibbs, just throwing that in there, won three different Super Bowl, three Super Bowls with three different quarterbacks. None of them were a Hall of Famer. Thigh's been ripping and oh, Thigh's been Williams and then ripping. So, yeah, man, it's crazy. Dallas is beating Edmonton one nothing right now. I do have some interest in this game because we're trying to win the President's Trophy. We need Edmonton to beat Dallas. We need him to beat Dallas. Raleigh. Uh, I'll be doing the Knicks next week. Oh, hold on. Truba, I'll remind you all, as long as the Pats had Brady, they would plug and play other players. Wouldn't count the Bills out as long as Allen is there. Amen, Truba. I agree 100%. Josh Allen is there. You cannot count them out. Remember the, thing Brady, had, the, huh? the thing with Brady was the thing with Brady was that people forget he was should have been the number one player paid every single year. And what did he do? Deferred the money and said, No, no, I don't need all the money, just get me weapons. And not for nothing, there was only one year. That was the year they went uh 16 or 17 and 0, whatever it was. We beat him in the play uh, in the championship. But they had Randy Moss. That was technically his only a one receiver that he really had, and you have yeah. every offensive record possible. Well, remember Dion Branch? Dion Branch was forgotten about when he left, and then he came back. He was great again. He made a lot of for receivers peanuts. for really peanuts. You know, they, they got him for peanuts. Yep, it was peanuts. He came back like in the playoffs, and you know, wrecked it and wrecked it. But I agree with that. Uh, Brady. One thing about Brady that I, I, I always say he's the goat. He said, I hate losing more than I like winning. Think about that. I hate losing more than I like winning. Oh, he said so, he would trade in two rings to get that undefeated season and beat the Giants. He said he would trade right, in he'll two probably keep, He'll probably keep all of them. He, he, he's just being modest. I promise you. I think he will give everything up to get that undefeated season. He said he would That's, give up two rings to do it. Two, he'd rather lose two different Super Bowls than to win that. I think he, he would have gave up more. He won seven, right? Was it seven? He won seven. He been went to he ten. He would have gave up seven. all of them. I promise you. He was just being modest. He would give up all of them just to have that undefeated season to beat the, the what is the seventy six uh, Dolphins. Yep. Seventy two Dolphins. Won, seven, excuse me, seventy two Dolphins. He would have gave up just to have that. That 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 title because he knows no one's ever gonna get that. The closest oh, the, one to uh, that, the other the other other closest team to that was uh, the Panthers, right? With um, Cam, with, they were uh, fifteen and one. With Cam, they were yep, they only lost one game. Nineteen ninety eight Minnesota Vikings yep. with Rams Cunningham, Robert Smith, Chris Carter, Randy Moss, fifteen and one. They lost. And who beat them? Who beat them? The uh, Chris Chandler, Atlanta Falcon, Dirty Birds, Jamal Anderson. And, and then just because the Gary team. Anderson, Gary Anderson missed a field goal that he hadn't missed in two seasons, I think. The other big season that they had, they played the Giants first round, and the Giants embarrassed them. I think they only scored two points on on they on. They scored uh, two points, forty-one nothing. Jason Seahorn shut down Randy Moss. I remember that. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Come on, Edmonton score, man. We're losing one nothing there. Uh true, I understand that they would let a receiver go and people would say they're done. A linebacker left plug in another play. That's true, man. The Patriots were definite plug and play, man. They they made situations work. The problem is as the game evolved, I think Belichick kept sticking with that motor and tried to make he it work. Didn't that he just, didn't evolve. He didn't evolve. He didn't evolve. Yep. And that's what sucks because think about it. How many teams right now are wanting a, a, a head coach? He has not gotten that one interview. He got it in the Falcons. That was it. Oh, let's just say one as an offensive coach, but not as a head coach. And all the Patriot fans and everybody said, oh, there's seven teams, even the media, man, they're going to be fighting over, but nobody fought over Belichick. And I think it's uh -huh. also because he didn't want to be just the coach. He wanted to be run everything. And – the last 10 years, he hasn't drafted very well. He had, uh... No, not the last 10 years, Donnie. Let's, let's go back furthermore. Tell me the best draft pick that he picked up. Teddy, oh, well, Teddy Bruschi. Since, top, since, side since, top, Brady. No, no. So how far is that back, though? No, I'm saying it's been over 10. In the last 10 years, he only drafted in two all pros, and one was special. Both were special teams. One was a kicker. So he hasn't drafted well, man, at all. And Mac Jones, I mean, everybody thought they had another Tom oh. Brady that first year. So I'll the problem you. is, this is my opinion, uh, 
You still, Bill is still the goat at coaching. He isn't even hired yet. I I could argue Bill not being the goat. Bill has a losing record without Tom Brady. Tom Brady saved a lot of his poor draft picks. Joe Gibbs won a soup three Super Bowls with three different quarterbacks, none of which were Hall of Famers, Raleigh. None of them were Hall of Famers. Joe Gibbs won three Super Bowls with three different quarterbacks. Belichick couldn't even win a playoff game when Brady left. And Brady won a championship without him. And the reason why Mac Jones isn't as shredded as... John, wait, hold on, John, 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 John. Let me cut you off real quick. Mac Jones. Uh, it was a Monday night or Thursday night game. It was windy. It was, it was horrible weather. He passed, was it three passes, John? Yeah, three passes against the Bills. Oh, That's right hold there. On. Yeah. Hold on. I'm going to give you props. John came up to me and said... I don't think they trust this guy. I don't think they believe in this guy. There is no way in the world that he only passes the ball three times in bad weather when Josh had X amount of passes. And I promise you, John, ever since when you said that to me, he has done nothing. Nothing, John. That, that was his runner up for rookie. That was his first year when he was runner up for rookie of the year. But that important game, Belichick ran the ball, would not let Mac Jones carry the team on his back. And I said, man, they don't have faith in this kid. They're like, the Patriot fan. Oh, it's bad weather. Josh Allen was throwing in bad weather, and he plays in New England. Mac played in New England, and you're going to be in bad weather. But my point, my point with Mac Jones is the reason why the media rips on Justin Fields and rips on Zach Wilson, and rightfully so on some of these, they don't rip on Mac Jones regressing. Why? Because it would go against their narrative with Belichick being his coach when his regression happened and made Matt Patricia, Matt Patricia, your offensive coordinator and in charge of calling plays. The guy was a defensive guy. And then you bring in Bill O'Brien, who is a good offensive coordinator, but it was too much to unravel. Mac Jones, but they don't rip on him because then you would have to enter into the narrative that your GOAT coach that didn't win a playoff game without Brady had a losing record before Brady. I mean, what do you say? They would, they, would, they would have to say that it was coaching that regressed from runner-up of rookie of the year to nothing. John, you, know, you do you know why I remember that game? We, we were speaking, and you said, Lou, there is a reason why he only passed three times. And at first, I didn't think about it. I'm like, no, but it's windy. And you were like, well, Josh Allen had the same windy um, conditions. And I was like, oh. But after that, what I tell you is – his stock went like this, like a kamikaze. Ow. He never, he never uh, recovered after that game. And you called it. You called it. No, he never did. And then they got, I mean, you know, Belichick to me, uh, well, hold on. We got truly he's the best coach he wants. I agree he didn't get hired because he was, he wanted total control and teams aren't willing to give him total control. Now, if Bill Belichick wanted to be just the coach. He would have been hired by somebody. I agree with you there, Truba, but I, I could argue he's not the greatest coach of all time. I, like I said, Joe Gibbs managed to win three Super Bowls with three different quarterbacks, none of which were a Hall of Famer. Rippon, Theismann, Doug Williams, what they about, were um, quarterbacks. Thompson but from, Belichick, from Pittsburgh. Bel I think I lost you, John. Belichick could not. His record was all Brady. No, Belichick is a great. I, I think Belichick is the greatest defensive coach that's ever played the game. He's got the greatest defensive mind of all time, but I, I refuse to give him the head coach title. He, but Super Bowl is even a tough one. Had Belichick made playoffs and the Patriots were constantly contenders and the team to beat after Brady, he'd have more of an argument there. They were horrendous, horrendous after that. That first season and then Mac Jones regressed, it's because you changed and put Matt Patricia in charge of Mac Jones? Jones, I Mac Jones is better than we think, but he Josh McDaniels gets lost, and then the regression starts, and these were Belichick's decisions. And then Belichick drafting players, he couldn't do the players. I, I, I have a hard time naming him GOAT. Would I put him in the top three coaches of all time? Yeah, but not – I don't not, remember not when he drafted – uh... Amory Hernandez and and Gronk. It was against um for me the best defensive mind that I ever ever saw. Um against Baltimore. They were lining up two tight ends for the first time that you know it was never really seen. And 
they'll have one tight end move, one tight end other move, and Baltimore was offside probably like 30% of the time. And they were like, oh, I- I'm sorry. This is he's cheating. And then Bill Belichick came. He's like, no, look at this, look at the playbook. I'm able to have two tight ends. One can move. As long as the other one stops, I can move the other one. Yo, Baltimore had no go back and look at that game. Um, look up uh Bill Belichick kills Baltimore with two tight ends. They didn't know yo, they got called for like 50. I'm a little bit exaggerating, but like 50 penalties. And after that, we're like, oh, we're going to um, we're gonna uh, test, we're gonna um, um, contest this game, whatever, whatever. Bill Belichick came out with his with his normal self. Well, the rule says I can have two tight ends as long as one gets set before the other one gets set. I'm good. Go look that up. Greatest freaking defensive game I've ever seen was Baltimore versus. Uh, I'm not saying. Okay. I'm not saying Belichick's not a great coach and has great minds. I mean, Jones not having it, like Truba pointed out. Mac Jones had no support. I agree with that. But whose fault was that? Whose coaching fault was that? It was Belichick's. And he gave him poor support yeah. after Josh McDaniels left. He tried to make Mac Jones what he did with Tom Brady. It's not going to work because he's not Tom Brady. And his, it just didn't work. But the Super Bowls they lost were offensive failures. Remember, Atlanta and Seattle should have won two of those Super Bowls. I agree with you there, True, but they Wrong. Belichick to me is the greatest defensive coach the game has ever seen. The guy's defensive mind, knowing the schemes, that's where I put Belichick. I do not dislike Belichick. To give him the easy GOAT title that a lot of the media does, I don't think he's easily the GOAT. Again, on, I and on. I don't think John. Joe Gibbs is the GOAT either. He's just my point of a great coach that could f- find a way to win with three different quarterbacks in three different almost eras. He won with Theismann over the Raiders, won with Doug Williams over Denver, and then won with Mark Rippon and company over Buffalo. So, like, and Rippon was not Jim Kelly, and they found a way to do it. It just, that is coaching. That's adjusting to the game and the players that you have. Belichick can never do that. I give him the greatest defensive coach of all time. That's just my opinion. But I do against, agree that Matt um, um, Jones is better than we think, and Daniel Jones has zero score also. Go ahead, Luke. Against golf, against golf in, in, in the Super Bowl was the highest. Uh, they led the league in offensive points. You know how many points they scored that that Super Bowl? Three. Three. Yeah, oh, against the Rams. Yeah. Against the Rams. Remember, they were all oh, the young coach. Uh, um, this guy is going to revolutionize the game, whatever, whatever. No, but I just say, hey, okay, if I if I send one extra dude, I keep an extra dude, I grab the tight end. Yo, they scored three points. The 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 game against Atlanta, they were up twenty eight to three, if I'm not mistaken, right? Twenty eight to three. And to what three. happened with that? Not saying that I'm giving it to Bill Belichick. I think it's more of a detriment to Atlanta, which me and you understand. Oh, no this. doubt. They... The prevent zone, horrible, horrible. And that's what he is when he should have been running the ball and running the clock out. So if you're down 23 going into the third or fourth quarter and you come out a win, I'm sorry, no matter what you say about any head coach, that's in-game strategy, in-game adjustments, and that's what he did, and they end up winning. Right, but you can also easily blame Atlanta on that too. And it's just oh, like coaching with two. I could too. Just like what uh, we can, we can. If you watch uh, some of those Atlanta Detroit. drives, they should have been running the ball and running the clock out, kick oh, a field. We can blame. Just we can blame look at what happened with Detroit last year. Oh, you know man. what I'm saying? You know, you you go for two. You go for two. You go for two. At the end of the day, dude, get the points. Get up by three or four just scores. Getting, just keep adding the points. That's all. I get that, and, man. Uh, and yo, they were, I promise you, Detroit will never get there ever again. At least in our lifetime. And I hate to say yeah, it. it's just uh, that was their shot. That was their shot. They were on fire. Um, you had a uh, Saint Pierre George, whatever the hell his name is, and everybody else. You had two running backs that were on fire. One did fumble in the third quarter, but dude, you don't go away from what's happening. Like, dude, keep going. But yeah, it's crazy, man. They had uh, a lot oh, of mistakes. hold on, John. Hold on, John. Last one I'm going to say was this: Tampa. Versus the Dodgers. You had, was it Snell? 
going through the first three battles, oh, the first yeah. three, oh, he was on fire, on fire. They were all for all for nine or something like that. Love Why it. are you taking him out? Why? Analytics. Well, I hate. I mean, I get the analytics, but that's crazy. That's why nah. Joe Girardi's not with the uh, Yankees anymore. He wouldn't do the And analytics. I hate to say this, because I'm not an A-Rod fan, but a had the best quote that day. He goes, yo, forget analytics. Analytics is great when it comes to this or that, whatever, whatever, but the eye test would never lie to you. The eye test would never lie to you. Why are you taking him out? Everybody was, yo, he was like, oh, yeah. Through the, first three, the, the first three times doing the lineup, I think they only like two or three hits. Why are you going to take him out? He's dominating. And on top of that, he's not a regular pitcher. He's your ace. He's the dude that got you there. The dude has six different pitches. What are you doing? I but, agree, man. And he, uh, I'm about to get out of here. Uh, Truba, yeah, greatest coach. You have to have Chuck Noll. Of course, Chuck Noll, Don Shula, Bill Walsh. All these guys you have to have in these conversations. Oh, so when the media just hands down Bill Belichick, greatest coach of all time, it's undisputed. It's not undisputed. Like Last I said, one I'm going to say, John. Take these coaches over Joe Gibbs, but I keep throwing that in there because he won three Super Bowls with three different quarterbacks. None of them are Hall of Famers. Last That's one, Johnny. Doing. Last one, Johnny. Last one, yeah. Johnny. Yeah, because I'm not really done. The Seattle versus uh, the Patriots. You had Marshawn Lynch. Oh, that was man. running over everybody. You couldn't stop him. The dude was on fire. Yep. And then you got fourth and two or three and two, and instead of giving him the ball, you gonna pass it? Yeah, you, you had two touchdowns also, I believe. You and you passed to your third best guy. Yo, the Patriots couldn't stop your run. They were averaging over six yards per run, and you gonna pass the ball? You got too cute. Yep. Too cute. Too cute. Well, John, man. Couldn't do it. Thank you for crazy. coming on today, John. Thank you for coming on. I know you wasn't you wasn't trying to come on today. I know I kind of baited you, and I was like, "Oh no, I want you." Come on, you uh, Rock you. and I spoke about this when we were out to dinner because I knew that tomorrow, even though I, I I don't know why I said I'd be on tomorrow, I won't be, but I knew that tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, I definitely won't be on. But I'm not going to be gone for a month. Like I said, it's some of the health stuff. I just battle through some of the things here to be on. Um, what a game to come on, Johnny. What a game to come on. But, yeah, this was great. Good talk tonight. And uh, Truba, yes, big uh, – Raleigh, are you a Giants fan, right? Yeah, Truba's a Giants fan. And he said the other – I am. He said I alluded I am. to that. That's why I was saying Big Giant Blue and I like the Giants. Blue. I like the Giants. I got uh, – I mean, I'm a Jet fan, but, I mean, come on, man. You got to have – you got to have the men. I mean, I like the Giants. Vice versa. I don't I don't hate the Jets. No matter what. As long as they're not playing the Giants, I love the Jets. I hate that's my New York team. Islanders. My team. I it's the only New York team. I will never go for oh, a yes. I've said it on here a hundred times. The Islanders, forget it. Um, I'll never ever in life go. They're the Red Sox to me. But guys, yeah, I'm gonna get out of here. I uh, will see you all. Let's just shoot for Monday. Maybe on. Sunday. Maybe Sunday. For uh, WrestleMania, and that's a that's a fifty fifty maybe. But Johnny, if you on, I will be watching Saturday and Sunday because this house is WWE fans right now. Now let me, yep. We like I said we have family here this weekend, so that let me see what happens Sunday. But right now I'm going to tell you. Right now I'm going to tell you. Uh, I was about to tell you. Oh, here we go. The Rangers' next game that's feasible for me to be on would be Tuesday the 9th against the Islanders and the Knicks next week. I'm going to say this, Eric, I know you're watching. Don't wait until the last second after your team wins to come text messaging me or IMing me about any Panthers or any Miami fans. Come on the feed, get in here, speak your truth. Speak that your froze? Yeah, froze. Don't wait until the end. To come text me, hey. oh, look at what Miami did. Come on, did you watch the game? We should get froze on you out. I'm calling you out, Eric. Yeah, he should be on here with us. Now, He's listen. Very good. very good. Oh, come on. The Knicks are playing Tuesday also. So it'll be a Knicks Rangers night Tuesday. Right now, let's just focus on next Tuesday. 
Oh, the Knicks play the Celtics on Thursday. The ne- okay, so next week, Tuesday, the Rangers play at 7, the Knicks play at 8, so we'll just make it a double a double feature. I've done that before. I'll, ha- I'll have both games on, Johnny, if you want. What is Froge texting you about? Oh, so yesterday, oh, so when, uh, when, when we beat the Panthers, I sent them, you know, a nice olive branch. Hey, great game. It was awesome. Both teams are looking good. See each other in the playoffs. He was just kind of like, you know, not these fingers that I'm showing you right now, Johnny. These are not the fingers that he showed me. He gave me the other fingers, which you're not looking at right now. I'm looking at the fingers that he gave me. And look, he gave me the other fingers. And he goes, oh, forget about it. We're going to see you in the playoffs. I'm like, all right, cool. So he has not texted me about the Knicks all year long. And then when they lose until yesterday, he was like, look. And I said, dude, I'm glad that you're happy for your team. I'm glad you believe in your team. But I'll see you in the playoffs. But don't come talk garbage to me now, but you ain't talked to me garbage the whole entire year. You should be Bro, on I'll give him credit. Yesterday, he texted me the second the game was official. He texted exactly. me. The same thing he did to me. Because he made the mistake before with me uh, back in, oh, gosh, I don't know. It was November. I think the Heat were held like double-digit leads, if you remember this game, the whole way and took a 17-point lead into the fourth quarter. December. It was December. Like 20, it was December. Points. December. December. And he was, was talking the whole, happened. he was talking the whole time. And then the whole time. And then I te- I blew up his phone after that. And like, yo, they choked and smoked too early. He did text. Now, I'm giving Froge credit. Sometimes he doesn't do it. He texted me a few weeks ago saying, hey, I don't know if you were aware, but who's the number one t- overall team in hockey? I don't know if you're aware. So I was like, yeah, the Panthers. He's like, I just wanted to make sure you were aware. So now every day I'm texting him, yo, that number one is actually a number seven. It's a number seven. So uh, and we beat them like, last time. But Frodo like, oh, I said, I I said oh, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad you're finally watching your team. I'm glad you're actually saying something. But is that what you said to him? <laughs> oh, I'll show, I'll show, I'm going to send you a screenshot after this. And I said, I'm happy that you that you believe in your team going into the playoffs. But it ain't going to happen. Bro, don't wait, wait until, him on don't him. wait until the game is over to start talking BBS. Talk to me during the game. Talk to me during the season. Don't wait until your team finally wins. Just say something. Oh, when the when the Rangers beat the Panthers, you know what I text them? Awesome game. Great game. Oh my God. It was amazing. I ain't say nothing bad. But he comes out yesterday and was like, oh, look what happened. Dude, you only won by a couple of points. And not for nothing. Yeah, not for nothing. We got, and not for nothing. At least you and I, we talk, and if we have to eat it, we eat it, and we do it to guys in here in the chat, the ones that jump in at the end of the game. Hey, your team sucks. Or there was a guy that dropped a comment. If you look at the comments from the live Pittsburgh game we did, Pittsburgh and Rangers, there's an Atlanta fan, not uh, Atlanta Braves symbol, and it said, "Oh yeah, the rags showed uh, or in playoff form in this one." I'm like. Really? I mean, really? Like, 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 where were you during the game? And coming on a live stream, if you're watching now, you come on the live stream and try to talk the crap. Talk the kid from Minnesota. I who, there was a kid from Minnesota that came here a couple of times talking talking BGD. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He ate it hard on that one. But, yeah, he's, he talked in with the Jets. Well, Jets he, at least he came back. But at least he came back to talk. <laughs> Even after we beat him a couple of times, or the Giants beat him, he came back and said something. You know what I'm saying? It's like, come on. Don't Mark the, the Mets fan it. was another one. Mark the Mets fan, and he, I told him he's welcome anytime. He jumped in when the – oh, remember the game a couple of years ago when uh, Max Scherzer shut down Judge and every, he owned him, striking him out, and they and they beat the Yankees both games. Mark the Mets fan was in every day. And then the next time the Yankees played the Mets and Scherzer was pitching, he was, he was the first oh, guy in the chat. And he's like, hey, man, ready for another defeat, ready to, for Judge to get on the first bat, bat, Judge. You called him out. Home. You called him out. You were like, where are you? Where are he's you? Disappeared. What happened? He disappeared. I'm like, what happened? I thought Scherzer was <laughs> shut down. I remember. I remember. And I'm, like, and I'm like, on top of that, you're talking about, you're not talking about some bum. Like, Max Scherzer shutting down Judge. There's no embarrassment with that. The dude is a Hall of Fame pitcher, man. It's like guys that would no. send me, oh, yeah, Lundquist is great. Look at this. They'll send me shots of, Ovechkin smoking Lundquist when he was young. I'm like, well, well, where's the shame in If you're willing to give it, make sure you're willing to receive it because you're going to get it here. 
You go oh, get it. I know. We Don't own up when we lose. We own up. Oh, we're Mets fans. We're Jets fans. We're Giants fans. We're you know Mets. So many other teams. And even Mets. The last two years have been, been, been good. But we can we can take it. But just make sure you give it. Make sure that you're on the live chat to receive what we're going to give you. Because we're going to give you the business. Just stay here. Don't oh, leave. Don't be scared. Oh, yeah. Come on. We take it, Johnny. We take it all. We take it all. We're New oh, Yorkers. We talk a lot of smack. Sometimes we got to eat it. But, man, we oh, don't do it at the on. end. We don't wait till the game's over and then talk. And that's lame. Yeah. That's oh, lame. I'm going to call Eric today. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm actually going to call him after this. And tell I'm going to let him have it. Tell oh, him we're on the bottom. We uh, I am. Well, anyway, let's focus on Tuesday. I'll, I'll talk to you over the weekend. Maybe Sunday night. Maybe Sunday. Maybe. But I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you. John, try to come out on time, Sunday. It's, it's it's be, I, I, I promise you this WrestleMania is going to be Oh, I'm going to be watching it. We're gonna think... I'm going to be watching it. I'm just it, – it's too much going on for me to be live with it. So no. why don't we do a little spurts? We can do a little spurts if you want. You know, we can do – no, no, okay. I'm the family just here, man. That's just – no, I got to respect oh, it. Oh, no, the family's there. Hold on. Yeah. I was out for two weeks because my family and friends were here. I understand. No, that I know. Family okay. rules, man. Can we say happy birthday to The Rock? Oh, we'll do all that. Uh, well, we won't. We won't be on tomorrow. I won't be on tomorrow. We got too much going on. Let me try something birthday quickly. Today. Happy birthday to The Rock. Amen. Happy birthday to The Rock. Uh, by the way, I'm trying one thing. If I don't, you'll hear me, but I want to see if this works. I'm trying something. Hold on a second. Since everything's over, it won't matter if I disappear. But let me try something. <laughs> All right, let me see if this works. Hold on. I disappeared, right? No, I see you. No, I. You see me, but you're on the screen by you. yourself. Oh no. Okay, so then hold you're on. on the screen by yourself, right? You see that? I'm looking on on the YouTube channel now. Hold on. You should be on the screen by yourself. I see the green on you. Wait, that should change. No, you're still here on both both ends. Hold on. Like when you when you leave, what do you hit? Leave chat. Where the hell do you find that? When I click on my screen, it'll say in relative leave. Hold on. Stop video blur. Because if there's times I do leave you by yourself, I can just put your uh I understand what you're trying to do. Yeah. You see that in that little box screen? You no, don't... nothing has no nothing has you have you haven't left on our, on my screen or on the YouTube screen. Yeah, but where do you find leave chat? At, once I click it, it'll say leave chat. Hold on, watch. Click what? A big red button. Well, maybe I can't leave because I'm the I'm technically the. Hmm. I see you left, but where did you find that? Oh, whatever. It's not that important right now. I might not be able to do that because technically I'm the. Uh... I'm going to work on that. There might be some days I could have you on here. To yep. start. So I left on the YouTube screen, but I guess since you're the main person. I can't leave my own meeting. No. That's what it is. That's what it is. We'll figure that out. We have to call our friend yeah, medication. We'll figure that out. I'm out of here, man. Yes, Johnny. I'm glad it's you came on today because this game was crazy, Johnny. Crazy. crazy. Oh, I'm going to watch. I've already, I'm, I'm going to watch uh, on my phone tonight. I'm going to watch the first, well, I'm here. I'm going to watch the first quarter. First quarter. First All right, guys. Quarter. Have a wonderful evening. Happy birthday to The Rock because without her, we wouldn't be here. Be Amen. Honest. Amen. Yes, 100%. All right, man. I'll talk to you over the weekend. Out. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, being here. This is freaking awesome. And uh, much, 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 much appreciated, especially during the like, health issues times. You guys have been great to me, man. I really appreciate you all. Johnny Basement out. Lou Talks out. We'll see you all. Just focus on Tuesday. Knicks and Rangers both playing same time. We'll talk on Tuesday. Out.